Super 10 member negotiation committee as well as another eight member technical committee. This step means that the 60 days period that has been set aside for the negotiations officially begins today when the chairperson of Azimio Kalonzo Musyok and Kenya Kwanzaa's Kimani Shungwa will sign the document with issues to be discussed. According to the bill submitted to Parliament, the committee will be free to take opinions from stakeholders from every sector and representatives from various groups, including the religious leaders. That the National Dialogue Committee shall report to the leadership of Kenya Kwanzaa and as mere coalitions within 60 days and thereafter submit its report to Parliament. That in the execution of its mandate, the National Dialogue Committee may invite, engage with, uh, with and consider submission from stakeholders, collect views from the public and engage experts, professionals and other technical resource persons. The technical committee created between both sides are already listed the issues that should be prioritized during the discussion. Among those issues are designing the IEBC, that is the formation of new IEBC commissioners, including the CDF and NGAF, funding the constitution and implementation of the gender representation law. In addition, the government wing aims to design a new fund for the Senate, as well as officially design the office of the leader of opposition. In addition, the opposition is pushing for a discussion about the cost of living, the inspection of the electoral server and the observance of laws to prevent migration from different parties. Now, the Law Society of Kenya wants President William Ruto to ask for forgiveness after his warning to all those who have filed cases in court over ownership and control of the Mumia Sugar Company. While addressing journalist LSK, President Eric Theory says the president's remarks have the potential to curtail the freedom of the court. Theory says the society has been in communication with some lawyers involved in the case who have expressed fear of pursuing the case further. The demand that we want to make on the president is to not only withdraw and apologize for those very, very unfortunate remarks, but also to allow the due process of law to take its course to its logical conclusion. In a court of law, we have laws that ensure equality of parties that appear before it and each party has an opportunity to present the case that they have before an impartial arbiter who is the court. Theory Father says the president's sentiments lent credence to reports of Cabra's sugar owner just once seeing Rai was given out Friday by unknown people and later released. Immediately, Mr. Rai was abducted. The president is on record as having made statements that he will stop at nothing to resolve uh, this matter of Mumia sugar. And yesterday, he buttressed those comments by uh, issuing the very, very chilling threats that he did to those who have filed cases with regards to the ownership and control of Mumia's sugar. So by implication, it would be uh, not far-fetched to say that the state had an hand in the abduction of Mr. Rai. The recent sentiments have been backed up by Haki Africa Director Hussein Khalid, who had this to say. Na yale matamshi ambayo yametamkwa na rais ni kama kwamba yamechukua katiba na kuisitisha kutotumika katika nchi yetu hii. Na sisi tunasema kwamba hilo ni swala ambalo wazi kabisa linakiuka katiba yetu na hatuwezi kukubali kama wananchi wa Kenya kurudishwa katika siku za kale ambapo ukiukaji wa haki za binadamu ulikuwa ukifanyika kiholela. Mbakasi East MP Babu Win has been acquitted in a case where he was charged with shooting Felix Orinda known as DJ Evolve in 2020. While making the ruling, however, Milimani Senior Principal Magistrate Bernard Shaw said the police conducted the investigations in a shoddy way. In his testimony previously, the DJ told Senior Principal Magistrate Bernard Shaw that he never witnessed the MP carrying a fire at the club on the fateful day. DJ Evolve also told the magistrate that he and the MP had a long-standing friendship of over five years before the incident occurred. On his part, Wino's personal assistant informed the court that the gun the MP was carrying on that day was not functional. I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning.
102.5 Spice FM Kisumu The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM If a lion shows you its teeth it doesn't mean it likes you <laughs> It doesn't mean it likes you <laughs> It won't start <laughs> <laughs> A liar calls as witness one who is either dead or far away. Say it in Ben lo nin inta yanin der ayu marqati kadikta. You know this uh, character called a liar. He has disturbed people. Mm -hmm. So when you tell him uh, who are your witnesses, he will take you to a place where it is difficult to verify. For someone like me who sweats uh, a lot, <laughs> I cannot survive there. <laughs> you know, sweating is biblical. Good. <laughs> and you must blame it on Adam, not me. You know, because <laughs> Adam messed up and, uh, and, and he was told, now you fellow, you, by the sweat of your brow, oh, yes. <laughs> thou shall eat. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Revenge is for children. Mm. It's for kids. When you grow up, you realize the best revenge you you can take on somebody is to ignore them. Now I'm just new in politics. Mm. It is not everybody's cup of tea. That's why some people come in one time and that's it for them. Political parties in this country do not have ideologies, whether luring or otherwise. And that is the effect of corruption. Any time an offense occurs anywhere in the country, it is the job of the Inspector General to look into it. Whether it's corruption, whether it's murder, whether it's petty, that is his job. If we have chosen to be a corrupt nation, then we produce corrupt leaders. Everything then becomes chaotic that you cannot be able to change a nation. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. This is one of the hottest show that we can ever miss in the morning. And it's a show that really gives a real situation in the situation room. Pleasure to be here. Mm. Thank you guys so much. Do that. Nice meeting you. Yes. You've been beautiful in uh, person more than in <laughs> photos. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Corruption is like pregnancy, you cannot hide it. You know, people are hiding here and there, you know, but after two, three months, five months, now you will see. Oh, so that is why the attitude that you are showing us, <laughs> you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> It's like what my grandmother would say, mm. cannot pickpocket a naked man. <laughs> How's that? It's communal, isn't it? No comment. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Wednesday. All right, how are we moving today? We're getting into day two, day three of kids getting back to school and schools opening all over the country. So that means that the movement is going to continue, probably heavily so. Let's look at Jogo Road and Jogo Road, not much, but Landy's Road getting towards Kamkunji. That's a totally different story. It has already piled up at this time of the morning and likely to increase as we get closer to traffic hour. Coming out of Westlands, you'll be fine, at least for now. James Gishiro, Chiromo, everywhere flowing free for now. And we're also looking at a little bit of movement coming off the northern bypass some coming in from runda northern as uh, upper and lower runda well something like that either way it's going to come through to kitisuru out towards limuru road and we'll see some movement on the thicker super highway not too far from now all right taking a look at what that action is coming off the eastern bypass uh coming through towards the outer ring junction and then into the city likely going to move up in terms of uh, strength later but for now you should be able to get where you're going without too much of an issue coming and going should not be a problem let us know when it does spice of mke on x let's keep things moving this wednesday this is the situation room the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, newshound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. 
This imagine is the situation room. The only way to... Imagine. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Tomorrow and month. Imagine. And then? Wake me up. Wake me up. Oh, sorry. Before you go, go. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? There's something like a wake me up when September comes. I'll be gone till November. I'll be gone till November. I'll, I'll be gone, gone till November. November. I'll be gone till November. January, February, March, April, May. As in, Wycliffe. Wycliffe, Jean just he decided, just, he let had me just no, sing the calendar. I was a high on the blood. And it's a I'm hit. Gone <laughs> November. I'll be gone till November. January, February, March, April, May. <laughs> <laughs> let me sing the calendar. Sure. And people around the world are buying the album. Yeah. I mean, for crying out loud. Hi. <laughs> These people. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh -huh. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Mm -hmm. Mambo yuko sour. Mambo yuko fresh. Very good. Santisana. Very good. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Did you do well yesterday? Yes, I did. Mekuletea salamu kutoka kwa governor Mutula Kilonzo Jr. Mimi, mimi, personally. Personal. Personal greetings. I mean. At least mambo kwa umati. Okay, slowly. Slowly. Don't take me too quick, Ray. Kusimama unaelewa. Simama nimeelewa. Umati unaelewa. Hapana. Umati ujui? No. Crowd ile. Oh, eh? Alice mama mbele umati. Akasema. Huyu jamaa. Na dada moja anaitwa Ndu. Na wewe ndo salimia Ndu. Mbele ya watu. Mbele ya watu. Yes. Alikutaja mbele ya watu. Eh. Sasa mimi kusalimia. Nipokea salamu. Sasa nipime sio ni pia mimi unitume. Ah, sasa nitakutuma usijali. Eh? Let a kitu ni mpeleke. Unarudi huko lini? Hata leo naweza enda. Ah basa, utakuona nyuma ya nini? Makwen ni nova. Makwen is not far. Makwen is not far. No, 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 no. For a messenger. For your friend. Yes. For my two friends. I just got out here, man. It's not an issue. No, no, no. Right, I'll have the message packaged and ready. Yeah, yeah, but man is quite busy and he's doing quite a lot of work. He had a full day yesterday. We had an event where he was coming at a place where Superior Homes is doing a truck stop. On the highway. A truck stop on the highway? Yes. C'est quoi? You see? Hmm. Think road safety. Thinking road okay. safety. Mm -hmm. I'm there. Think long distance drivers, buses, trucks, even personal long distance drivers, right? I'm there. Uh -huh. Coming from Mombasa. Going to On Uganda. the northern corridor. Mm. All right? Mm. What places do they have to stop and sleep? Apart from now the mushrooming towns. You come to Voi, Mutituande, Kebwezi, Keboko, Emali, Sultan Hamud, Salama, like that, like that, like that. And so you'll find in many of those places, you actually don't have a place for trucks to park, right? So even if you want drivers to spend the night, like at Mlolongo, where do they park? On the road. Right. So set up a proper parking spot where they can come, Park a truck, there's a petrol station, there's a service station, there's accommodation, there's restaurants. Come and there are washrooms oh, and bathrooms yeah. and hot showers. And you can get the thing yes. and then you can move, take yep. a nap. So you come in, actually stay there, take a nap, sleep. After a couple of hours, get up, go to your truck, go or bus or vehicle. or. I love that idea. Mm. I think it's brilliant. It is. Mm. Yes. How many more could you do around the country? Many. I love it. We are planning to do about six or so along the Northern Corridor. Oh, voila. Yeah. So Mutila Kilonzo Jr., the governor, came because the first one now is in uh, Makoweni, mm -hmm. just between Salama and uh, Sultan Hamoud. Just a couple of kilometers before you get to Sultan Hamoud mm -hmm. heading towards Mombasa. Mm -hmm. But it's on the other side of uh, the road as you come from Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he had spent an entire day you know, just doing touring projects, and launching forth, this and that, going. meeting people. Uh, uh, yeah, very, very busy man and quite energetic. Yes. Mm. Ah, my friend.
Yeah. Good morning, everybody. CT, I see everybody's asking, so where is CT? Where is CT? CT is chilling. He's relaxing. Uh, he's got things to do, like we said. <laughs> Places to be. And hopefully he'll be back. Akimaliza ya mambo anafanya. Anakuja. Sawa. Atarudi. Atarudi. Atarudi heavy karibuni. Let me tell you what we'll be discussing today, though, even though in his absence. We'll be joined by the chief executive officer of ICTA. Do you know what ICTA is? <coughs> the ICT authority. Right. The ICT authority is under the ministry of that one. ICT and digital and digital economy. Mm. Some things, yeah. yeah. And there's... ICT Authority CEO will be joining us. His name is Stanley Kamanguya. He'll be here to talk about the state of the ICT sector in Kenya and the impact that this has on the di digital economy in the country. That is at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. At 8 o'clock, we've got this ministry called MITI, mm -hmm. Ministry of Investment, Trade, Trade and, and Industry. Industry. Uh, last week, but one, we hosted the Principal Secretary in the State Department for Trade and Industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today, we're hosting the PS for Investment Promotion. The other eye. The other eye. The first eye in MITI. His name is Abubakar Hassan Abubakar. He is going to join us to talk about attracting investors into Kenya. That's his job. Attracting investors into Kenya. Think about oh, Dongo Kundu social economic, you know, special economic zone. Think about the expansion of all these new more, what are they called? Um, uh, 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 export. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, there's Kipes. Yes. Kipes is the county aggregation and in industrial parks. parks yeah. And then you've got special economic zones. You've got export processing zones. What's the difference between SEZ and EPZ? He'll come and tell us. And then also, you know, this agency called Ken Invests. Mm -hmm. Its mandate is to attract investment into the country. It's under this particular State Department. The PS Abubakar Hassan Abubakar joins us at 8 a.m. Let's ask him those questions. What exactly are you people doing? Remember, this is the accountability platform. Come and tell us. Uh -huh. mm. At 9 a.m., we go into Kiabu County politics. <laughs> the members of the County Assembly of Kiambu County, the day before yesterday, came out in their numbers. And they said, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Enough is enough. Shagana and Shagana. This what it man. Means. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this man called Governor Wamatangi. Uh, uh, I do feel. Mm. And by the way, by the way, Kichasa Nasisi will impeach him. Yes. Two of those MCAs will be joining us in the studio at 9 a.m. Patrick Garuya is the MCA for Tigoni Ward. And Ruth Waidera is the MCA for Gedega Ward. They'll come and tell us, Nini, ni si mwacha governor afanya kazi. Ama ishida iku hapi. Ama namna gani. My friend. 19 minutes after 6. There you go. All right. So, we are live streaming the show as usual. YouTube and Facebook. If you're online, let us know where you're tuned in from. We'll do like that shortly. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi at 14, highs of 21 and lows of 13. We'll see lows of 13 as well and a mostly cloudy in Akuru at 14, going to highs of 25. 22 would be the high in a mostly cloudy area at 13 and in Eldoret, it's cloudy at 12, highs of 22 through Wednesday. Partly cloudy at 23 in Mombasa, highs of 29 and we'll see highs of 28 in a mostly clear Malindi at 23. It's 19 and cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 29 and lows of 18 and 27 will be the high in a mostly cloudy Kakamega at 17. Kampala is cloudy at 20, highs of 28 and lows of 17 and 30 degrees is what it is in Dar es Salaam. It's mostly cloudy at 24. 8 degrees and mostly clear, highs of 22 in Johannesburg, and it's mostly cloudy at 26 in Lagos, highs of 29. 31 will be the high in a partly cloudy Kinshasa at 24, and at 28 already Wednesday afternoon, Beijing is sunny, highs of 30 and lows of 19. It's cloudy at 14 in Paris, highs of 21 and lows of 12, and looking into London, it's cloudy at 14, highs of 20 and lows of 11. It's still Wednesday night in New York. Rather, it's still Tuesday night in New York at 23, coming into Wednesday, highs of 27 and lows of 21.
Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM. Uh huh. Good morning, a lady and a gentleman. Freddie Ben says, good morning. Well, good morning to you. Good morning, Spice, my favorite station. Christopher O'Ching is good morning to you. Good morning. I've just woken up. Coffee scent and Spice FM. Hey, I like that. Coffee and Spice. Um, so George Gashoiri is on the London Bridge. On the bridge. You know that London Bridge is falling down? Mm. You've heard that one, you know? Mm. Okay. Falling down, falling down. Okay. Agri Momani says, good morning, great people who meet, give life, rather give life meaning every morning. Why? Edna, go to Senior Chief Musa Nyandusi mm -hmm. and help to claim my fee back. They deceived me, goat meat is mutton. Kumbe ni shivon. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, goat meat is called shivon. Goat meat is shivon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don Sabwa says, oh. hi, great team. Ndu, I love your pronunciation. You are doing good. Well, thank you very much. Good. Kudos in Malawi. Where is person? We say Ali Kuti. So, Ali Kuti City. Where uh. is CT? Okay. Uh -huh. Ali Kuti City. This Masumbia says, good morning from Siokimao. By the way, what is the meaning of Uhame Kenya? Ufungwe ama usafiri mbinguni. What is the meaning? Tatu. <laughs> You leave the country, <laughs> you go to heaven, <laughs> or you get go locked to jail. Up. Which yeah. one don't you understand, my brother? <laughs> mm -hmm. Jimmy Wekasa says, good morning, Team Spice FM. Looking forward to this morning. I wish you all a blessed day. Zeke, good morning. Y'all blessed for bracing the great rain here. Really, Atlanta, you're coming out of a hurricane. What about that? Spice of my life from Mandera Town. Abdi Ibrahim, good morning to you. Isaac Babji says, good morning from Port Florence. Where is Port Florence? Masharia Jero says, good morning. Tune in from Portland, Oregon. CT, do you know who got the tender for the new police uniform? CT will tell us. I know he's following <laughs> that closely. Shots of the new police uniform being baby blue. <laughs> Desmond says again, where is our last born CT? Ndu's asking, he's asking Ndu, where's our last one, City? <laughs> okay, so it's coming, don't worry. Um, <clears throat> Joe Mongai says he was happy to listen to his former boss, Collins or you. Yes, yes. And the 2000 says, good morning from down under. Ndu and Eric, imaginary hugs for the two of you. Tumepokea. Tumepokea. John Kiangu says, good morning. After Kutuhepa Ujarudi, <laughs> he's coming, don't worry. You guys just take it easy now, small, small. Mm -hmm. Dr. Venvik says, good morning from Tudor in Mombasa. Robert Mboga says, good morning. And life is waving. Um, Brian Otieno, CC went to get new batteries. Well, something like that. And James Mwangi says, good morning. And Masharia says to tell you that they're called rest areas or rest stops. Mr. Mm. Eric, those truck stops. Yes. Something like that. Yes, yes. Julia Song says, good morning, Eric. And into beautiful, bright morning indeed. Yes, it is. Attica seems to have his knickers in a twist this mm. morning and they say, why are government minions coming? Well, they better come and explain what they're doing, hadn't they? Mm -hmm. And he says, you'll be back when CT's back. Well, that's all right, Atticus. Have a good day, won't you? Eric, uh, John Wangoy says, Eric just mentioned on the highway and reminded me of that guy who was nabbed by alcohol bill like a rat. Like a rat. <laughs> On the highway. On the highway. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. <laughs> this is where you go wrong. <laughs> like a rat. Busting me. Like a rat. <laughs> on the highway. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, Jamal Ayub, we see you. Um, karaoke is tuning from Ontario. Oreje is also tuned in this morning. And um, Sam is in Houston. George Thor is in Houston as well. Mm. And looking in from Raleigh, North Carolina, Alvin Ombalo joins us. Everybody, Karibuni Sana, we love having you here. All righty. The day is proverb still from South Africa. When a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. Mm. In addition to its own. Mm. All of us are building the house together. When a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. That have fallen. Other birds sacrifice. Other people sacrifice for you. Could be many things. Yeah. <laughs> The bird does not kill the other birds. No, but they've lost their feathers, right? Mm. That's the way. That's the why you have them. Or maybe this is just a plan by the birds 
keep dropping a feather for someone else this to is build it. a house. We all contribute to somebody else. Mm. We all living in a community. So when you see a bird, you know, losing a feather, don't feel sorry for it. It's helping somebody else. Mm. I like it. I like these birds. Shindio. Mm. All righty. The headline. Ah. Uh. Nation uh, Makuja. Ah la 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 la. Ah, watch your hands in the air, Funny tree. <clears throat> Taken or rather, <clears throat> excuse me. Allow me to start again. Take back the death threats. Leaders tell Ruto president irks leaders and civil rights activists with his remarks to sugar investors, telling some that they will either leave the country, he will jail them, or escort them to their maker. Wah 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 wah. So some people mm-hmm. decided. We don't want to be hearing this kind of talk. And no, no, no less from you, the president. Okay? Mm. We'll look into the details of that. <coughs> Let's go outside a little bit. You know Salif Keita? Yeah. You know him? Yeah. He crooned some beautiful melodies. Yeah. He has now backed the coup leaders in the what is being called the coup belt. Uh-huh. We'll look at details of that. Western seeks to chart the course without Rilo Dinga is also what is coming out in the headlines. And uh, the question also, what went wrong for marathoners in Budapest? A post-competition um, analysis is being done about that. And just when you thought that we were out of the water, mm. the judges who were denied positions of promotion by former president Uhuru Kenyatta are now seeking payment. I mean, <laughs> they've moved to court seeking compensation, claiming that they were victims of impunity and no reason was given them for being denied promotion. So guess what? How about you pay me something? Yeah. KQ has blamed the dollar for the record 21 billion shilling loss. Mm-hmm. They've lost some money and they're saying, you know, it's not us. It's the dollar has done a belly flop from six months ago when we we're talking about 120 shillings per to the dollar. Mm. We're now at 150 shillings to the dollar. So, I mean, you might 30, 30 shillings on the dollar. Imagine if you're paying a thousand dollars, how much is that? 30,000. Put it in the millions, mm. right? Like that. It's a big difference. Mm. <coughs> um, so, looking at some other headlines. Um, in the standard <laughs> i forgot that i'm still here i'm just here still the headlines in the standard, in the standard. Uh, um so we looked at that western charts so we'll look at the details of that as mm. we go along and see what else we can get and also doing a post uh, event analysis of the for Budapest. blackout oh blackout um, that happened over the weekend uh so that's what it looks like and we'll look into the details okay mm. so we just do traffic now Sindio. Then we look at the details shortly. Oh, that we're feeling like abandoned children. Uh-huh. Might as well. Okay, my let's just do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so our athletes came back. Our medalists, mm. Faith Kipiegon and Faith Kipiegon mm. and uh, Mora. Yeah. <laughs> came back. <laughs> came back. <laughs> our gold medalists, plus, oh no, we got others. We got silvers. We got yeah. a couple of silvers. We got a couple of bronzes. Well, they did well. But not as good as they should have. But well, okay. It's okay. The, the athletes did well. Did the team do well? No, it no, didn't. Unfortunately. Not. Yeah, we've got to say it that way. It's half past six. Let's take a look at traffic. All right, probably seeing a difference now that we're around about to 6.30. Um, some movements now on the Thicker Superhighway. It's coming into the CBD, but that's fine because it's just off Pangani. If you're coming out of Westlands, you're not going to see much right about now anyway. Think of superhighway movement here and there. Nothing has in, is in formation in terms of bumper to bumper. And you'll be fine coming off Kiambu Road. Coming out of Westlands, you're all right. If you're coming off Mombasa Road as well, this, you're okay. Most of the movement that we're seeing is right around Landis and Kamkunji roundabout, getting in and out of the CBD. Still a lot of movement as kids go back to school across the country and within the city. So we're keeping an eye on things and see how they progress closer to seven. Let's talk on Spice FM KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. 
president irks leaders and civil rights activists with his remarks in sugar investors telling some that they will either leave the country or he will jail them or escort them back to their maker. Good mm. grief. There's a gentleman called Robert Madzayo. Mm. He is the senator of Mombasa County. Ma- K- Kilifi. Um, Robert, Robert or, or Stewart? Sorry, Stewart Madzayo. Kilifi. They've made it, they've gotten it wrong here. Completely. Kabisa. Mm. Even though Mr. To them, coast is Mombasa. <laughs> <laughs> it's coast. Uh-huh. Coast is Mombasa. Mm. Doesn't matter whether you're ta- Taita, Kuali, it's Mombasa. And you it's Mombasa. Uh-huh. Okay, so Kilifi. Even though Mr. Rai is being accused of frustrating the revival of the sugar industry, mm. there are better ways to address this other than the president issuing callous threats. Um, Eric Theuri, who is the president of the Law Society of Kenya, says the demand we are making to the president is not only for him to withdraw and apologize, but to allow the due process of law to take its course to its logical conclusion. The, the, the first part of that sentence, we might be waiting yeah. for a cold day in hell for that to happen, but all right, in terms of an apology. So what do they want him to apologize for? The callous threats. They were in bad taste, according to them. What threat? He said you will either meet your maker. There's only one way to meet your maker. Life must be removed from you. Well, no, yeah, but everybody's going to meet their maker. Yeah, but he seems he's going to hasten the process. <laughs> wow, okay. Tachia <laughs> mungu. President William Ruto has been criticized by opposition and civil rights groups for his threats against pe- business people who oppose these sugar sector reforms. Mm. Amnesty International, our good friend, said that and the Law Society of Kenya expressed concern about President Ruto's remarks, calling him careless and disturbing. They said it was troubling for the head of state to threaten investors with arrest, deportation or even harm. Mm. So it's now what they're seeing that it leads to. Mm. The MPs led by Senate Minority <coughs> Leader Stuart Mazzaio claims that President Ruto's attack on billionaire Jaswat Rai, especially when Rai had uh, been abducted, appeared to be politically motivated and aimed at investors who didn't openly support the president. Even though Mr. Rai, um, we look, looked at that statement, he said, look, Um, Callous threats by the roadside will not be accepted. A statement signed by Amnesty International, Haki Africa and the Kenya Human Rights Commission said Ruto's words taken in their literal meaning constituted a threat to people involved in court cases over ownership and control of Mumia's sugar company. Mm. The human rights groups and the utterances called into questions, rather, they said the utterances called into question the government's commitment to the right of life and protection of persons against cruel and inhumane treatment Mm -hmm. so they said uh, that uh, it was important for a democratic society governed by the rule of law and highlighted rather to behave in a manner that uh, states those issues they've highlighted the potential ripple effects of such sentiments to the nation's stability Uh. senator beatrice ogola said you can never hear a president of a country governed by the rule of law issue death threats to its citizens if just want Rai is guilty of the crimes he's <coughs> accused of, mm. there are independent constitutional institutions to deal with that. The president has said it and more than once. Mambo ni? Tatu. Matatu. Kama ni awesi, wahame Kenya. Ama tuwasukume jala. Ama waende minguni. Right? Hakusema ama ni wapeleke minguni. Hakusema ni tawa deport. <laughs> You're trying. You're trying. You're doing very well, though, you know, my friend. This thing, yeah? Mm. If obviously, obviously, coming from the head of state and with the history that this country has, then you can clearly see why people would be like, hey, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Right? Because those are direct threats. <clears throat> There's not not two ways about it. Mm. He just told them, you know what, you guys are not going. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, by the way. Mm-mm. Now you have cases in court. You either go and withdraw those cases, or I deal with you perpendicularly. <laughs> Sawa. That's basically what he's telling them. Mm. And when a president who has got so much power given to him by the law, and others that are not given to him, but others that he can use tools that are available to him to misuse. When he uses such, such words, then you are likely to do that. But this is the beauty of this country. That it doesn't matter who. It's the president who speaks. There'll be people who tell him, boss, 
Check yourself. Uh, 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 uh. Not like that. Let me tell you. Immediately, people will come out and say, Apana. Mm. And it's not just at the opposition because they are the opposition side. Oh, Even now, these other organizations will come out and say it. Good thing. I, I agree 100% because there are countries living in the same space today mm. Mm. whereby you utter such a word, you would not be breathing tomorrow. And I'm talking about you would, would somebody would have disappeared you in whichever way. Clearly, you, you would have actually gone to the Binguni, mm. what we're saying. Mm. That you would not have the, 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 the space to make such sentiments does not exist uh. in countries within which we share the same spaces on the globe today. Mm. So I do agree that the space whereby... Um, opinion can be shared is quite robust and that's what we should be encouraging that somebody can call out the person who would appear to have the most power yeah. in the country and say no my friend mm. we cannot do this and it would be interesting to see how, to see how he responds I don't think he can get an apology I think you might get an explanation as to what he was trying to say but uh, to say uh, well let's see you never know yeah, yeah, come yeah. off the weekend of some apology so you never know I, I'm not sure we're going to get a, a a kind of an apology from the president on this. He so. repeated, he said it more it's than once. He said he it the first it. time. Yeah. There was some reaction. He repeated it. There was some reaction. He repeated it. Mm. Okay, so it's clear that he's sending a message. He's not going to apologize. He is not going to apologize. He'll explain it more. But, but uh, should he or should he not? Should he apologize? No, say what he's saying. Oh, right. Should he act tough? Mm. Because now that's the other side of the debate, okay? There are people who are saying, this is what we need. We need a guy who comes out and says, you know what, stuck you pussy. We've got to sort out this sugar issue. It's been there for so long. We have to sort it out. And we know there are cartels. And the way to deal with cartels is just to tell them, boss, I am shipping you out of town. There's no way you'll negotiate with cartels. And can you ask an individual mm. who's being so tough on one side to then temper it on another side? Wouldn't you want the same bullish attitude across board ah. if he was to deal with these things? Mm. He's the one who's speaking to the Western nations and saying, absolutely not. You cannot continue to treat the global south like this. Then would you lose that kind of fervor when it came to dealing with things in your country? I don't know that you it's, can ask this person to split the way. I guess the issue is he in this particular case, he is seeming to lean on extrajudicial ways of dealing, dealing with an with, issue. Right. All right. You, you have no control of our judicial process. Mm. You can only prosecute. Then the judiciary will deal with what is brought before them. Right. So then, you yeah. can not just wake up and deport somebody because they have a case in court. And you cannot persuade God to take away somebody. After all, it's you, he's not Elijah. Look, <laughs> the thing, so it, the the feeling that it gave to a lot of people who were listening then yeah. is exact is an extension of what you're saying mm. that because he's in that position, the assumption is that then when he would use his powers to do one of those three things, mm. and that is what sits uncomfortable for a lot of folks. That hold on a minute, actually mm. no, we have institutions. If the guy or whomever it is is in a position whereby he has committed a crime or an offence, let the institutions which are properly constituted deal with that. Yep. You cannot do that because you are president. So check yourself yep. before you wreck yourself and if you want them to withdraw the cases that they have before court then call them mm. have a conversation with them you did the same with the unions uh, with the cases against nssf do the same mm. with these ones if that's what you need but also remember this is coming just off the back of a couple of months ago when the same president and his deputy and others in the Kenya Kenyan administration were admonishing the previous administration for what it had done extrajudicial killings right saying this, these guys had come up with some rogue police units. Um, they had taken matters into their own hands. They had killer squads. They even had places where they were committing these murders and a kind of atrocious, uh, heinous crimes that were being committed by those who were entrusted mm. to enforce the law. And the president came out and said, you will never see this kind of thing again in this country. And then, and then we this. see the president himself saying, this kind of things that he's saying. It's the insinuation. Yeah. yeah. You're like, ah, ah, boss, but you're heading in that same, same direction. It's just barely a year since, since you were sworn in and since you said the things you're saying. How about by the time you're finishing three years? Shall you have been emboldened enough to actually form a squad that deals with such nuisances? And, you know, it is with some sugar baron somewhere is disturbing you. Deal. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
Mfikisha mm. pale juu hapo mwingine Mungu achukue. Mm. You know? <laughs> That's the scary yeah. part. That's the thing. These things in check. That's the thing. Yeah. This is the same president and the same administration that said we shall never see this kind of things again. And remember when you talked about it here we said, yeah yeah yeah, he's talking so tough about that court squad. What was that squad by cannot his court called? The one he disbanded? Uh, special SSU, sir? Something. I'll, I'll find yes. it in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and he dis- I s- ordered the disbandment of that squad and we said, look, he is going to create his own squad. He will have his own squad. Mm. If just want Rai did not kidnap himself, he did not stage his own kidnapping, then he was kidnapped. And even if he staged his own kidnapping, then it's the job of the police because it was reported to them by his family that this man is missing, the police ought to have come up with answers by now yeah. or special at least crime should be showing prevention it. unit now became the ssu special yeah. service unit yes yeah, that's ssu and you are equal to a container mm. no, no. Mm. the police ought to give us answers on what happened to just one try honestly speaking. if he was kidnapped by thugs tell us who the thugs were yeah if he was arrested by, by police you? on what charge tell us yeah because the dci boss says no it's not us it's not us it's possible it could be a rogue unit within do the police investigation do your investigation tell us who if it's not if he stage managed because there are the people who are saying this guy he just staged this whole thing to create some scenario find out and come and tell us everything that we see here this pickup that came and blocked his vehicle had come from his home 15 minutes earlier show us man but you've got to give us answers we can't just be sitting here and saying oh what to oh we don't know what happened it's too soon meanwhile as we talk about the police mm. uh, they want to change their uniform baby blues i'm telling you hey. it's going to be like you see that blanket you wrap the baby in okay sorry which one the, that light blue is the color i'm talking about not the blankets the blanket light blue. <laughs> the blight the light blue color yeah. of the police of the blanket mm. that's what they want who knows <laughs> <laughs> they have some options they've actually posted it on their social media and they're saying they're coming around the country they want other police officers and the public to give their views we want to change our uniform we just don't like the other one was called mother's union <laughs> but it's no, see, is it not baby blue? look at it now it's this baby is blue. it eh? this is the baby blue that's baby blue yeah why don't they just go back to the original one why don't we just not have a conversation about this and let's actually do some policing in the country <laughs> i mean for crying out loud is this an issue sorry is it an issue yeah should we just change your uniform and let's keep it moving they kept moving and we were not able to move oh we didn't like it it was too blue Aye. Aye. the other one now even this one oh. i think they, even the models they are using because like this cop <laughs> well, the problem is with the cop now yeah. <laughs> that shirt is not fitting <laughs> look at that photo Vanna. Sasa. i think it's the, uh, it's it's the model they have used this guy mm. this shirt is bigger than him it's the wrong size What's wrong, Eric? It's the wrong size. Oh, you prefer- so, you know, because of that, now you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh, now this thing not working. I when did we'll bring a bigger uniform? photo. Was it not just that COVID that they changed uniform? Barely four years ago. Yeah. Yep. So what's going to happen to all of this one? Which one? The blue, the Mother's Union one. The Mother's Union one? Huh? See, Amesha. It's end up, eh? I see you, Amesha. It's a police. Each police officer has been given a uniform. <laughs> Takwa dasta. Tak piga dek piga dek na yo uniform. So, so, watch any cool is here. Mm. E are blue. It has already been done. Oh, are, are you seeing there are different options? These are samples. These are samples. Okay. That's what they want you now to come and choose. A B C O D. What Those, if none the of the thing, above? I think they should do navy blue. It would look really nice. Which one is navy blue? Navy blue is the color of this trouser that this gentleman in fatigues is where is holding. Uh, I think it should be navy blue. Me, I was getting used to the other one already. You like the baby blue? Do you remember the previous the previous one? No, I don't actually. It was close to this. It was close to this baby blue, Abby? No. Was that's what? green. Ah, the uniform was green. What you're pointing at is green. Oh, no, this one. Which one? This. The uniform was close to this before. Wasn't to what it? they're proposing now, yes, yes but it yeah. was of different shade. Okay. Mm. So those are the options I actually don't see those what's the difference or is it the ranks So there's short sleeve there's long sleeve and uh, what's the difference between A B C and D What's the difference between C and A is my question I don't get Did it Did you see 
What's the difference between C and A? Can you see C and A? What's the difference? I don't get it. Then what's the difference between B and D? So one has insignia on the sleeves. All of them have they insignia all do. on the sleeve. Um, the other one has a rank and or name and name, name and rank. Name and rank above the or pockets. name and service above the pocket. Um, I don't know, man. Ah, Christ. So they're coming around the country to ask you whether you like it or not. Yeah. Mm. So what if s- suppose you say we don't like it? And then what happens? Meanwhile, somebody's at their t- at their machine doing. It's already coming out Tell for you to talk know. My friend. <laughs> it's already done. Uh, yeah. So now, if you say you don't like it, Sharia, look at the nation. <laughs> If you say you don't like it, that's your problem. Uh, <laughs> Somebody is uh, removing 1,000, 2,000. It's already coming out. Hi. So this is a window dressing. Edna, do you like that <coughs> uniform? Yes? No? Tick? We go. Edna doesn't like it. Edna doesn't like it. Edna doesn't like change. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you bringing change? Uh, okay, the nation has come. It has. So, the headline in the nation. Smart or reckless? Again, the question of the president. President William Ruto is a man on a mission to deliver on his campaign promises mm. and the expectations of many Kenyans, um, hoping for a break from the high cost of living. But even as the... Uh, Sorry, even as he sets out to crush rampant sugar cartels and revive the ailing sugar sector, his recent broadsides on the ownership of Mumia's sugar company has stirred up a storm. Nickers are in a twist. People have a sour taste in their mouth. They do not like it. And the question is, what is going to happen? Tough times as Kenyans withdraw 30.8 billion shilling savings from sacos. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I see a comment here. Yeah. I'm only saying about this police uniform. Mm. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> 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 Who is that? Who is the person? <laughs> Emmanuel Yambari. <laughs> Emmanuel said, I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. Kenyans are ungovernable. I'm telling you. Now you can imagine the tough job that the pre- this president has. <laughs> we governing new people. <laughs> Shish. Uniform. Hey. Kitenge. Washawa by Kitenge. <laughs> hey. All right. Like MPs it. plot to unplug the Kenya power monopoly. Really? I really wonder what happened yesterday. I didn't follow when <laughs> this, the members of parliament summoned Chiu mm. The energy CS. Neither did I. I didn't follow. I wanted to really hear what questions they were going to ask. Mm. If you no catch them. This is where they were talking about it. Let me tell you. Mm. Consumers will have a choice to buy electricity tokens directly from the independent power producers or Kenya Power if MPs approve a proposal contained in a report of a parliamentary committee. In a bid to tame Kenya Power's monopoly, the only way to tame a monopoly is to in- I- I- invite another one. That's mm-hmm. the only way. But anyway, um, the National Assembly Department Committee on Energy is proposing to have IPPs, through the help of Kenjin, sell power directly to consumers as one of the ways of reducing the high cost of electricity. Uh, the proposal is contained in the draft report of the committee that is currently in Mombasa. Highly placed sources in the committee said that the um, MPs want consumers to have a choice between Kenya Power and the IPPs. So that will be interesting to see if that actually happens. If the draft goes through, then there's a possibility of you buying your power direct from the guy who produces it. Instead of you going to the milk machine, you go to the cow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever they gave you this morning... (laughs) It's starting to slap now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are they coming up with a bill? Yes, it's in draft. It's a draft bill yes. already, yeah? Mm. Okay. 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 Mm. There's a sad headline in the standard, uh, not in the nation. Sad in this way. Kenyans last year cashed out 30 billion shillings of the money they had put in circles. As economic hardship characterized by the rising cost of living pushed them to the brink. Latest figures from the SASRA, which is the SACO Society's regulatory authority, shows withdrawal, withdrawable deposits, also known as FOSA savings, which are usually held by SACOs as demand deposits, 
fell by 26.9% to 83 billion shillings from 114 billion shillings. Kenyans that work at 114 billion shillings what? are saving in circles. They withdrew a lot of that. This can be attributed to the high cost of living, resulting in members withdrawing their savings for consumption purposes. That is so sad. Mm. The harsh macroeconomic conditions are provided for most of the 2022, prevailed for most of 2022, such as inflation and exchange rates and drought resulted in a significant reduction in disposable income. This was the second year in a row that savers were dipping into their savings. Sacco savers had withdrawn 10.4 billion shillings the previous year, reducing forced savings in Sastra supervised circles from 12 billion shillings to uh, by 12 billion shillings. Let's yeah. just put it that way. This is this is this is see. <laughs> no, no, <sir. laughs> Things are like that. Um, it's it's getting tougher. So you you know go into your savings because you had saved for for that day that day has university come university fees whatever that, that day has visit. come people are actually going for <sighs> okay uh -huh. this is an interesting story yeah um <clears throat> the high court in mombasa mm. has stopped a kali's court in kwale from presiding over a dispute involving a family that professes both the christian and muslim faiths mm -hmm. Um, Justice Olga Sere issued the order following complaints over the Kavi's jurisdiction. The judge agreed with Josephine Kiavi Isika that the jurisdiction of a Kavi's court is limited to determining the matters of Muslim law relating to personal status, marriage, divorce, or inheritance in proceedings where all parties are Muslims. According to Sewe, since the second respondent has conceded that Miss Isika is her stepdaughter and that a number of the deceased beneficiaries are Christians by faith, it is clear that she has met the threshold for the grant of leave. Mm. The woman approached the High Court in March this year to protest that a move by the Kwale Principal Kadi Salim Mwaito to proceed with the hearing and distribution in the estate of Crispus Isika, who had died. The woman claimed Mr. Mwaito um, Mwaito, rather, presided over a matter relating to the estate of the deceased who was a Christian and that some of the beneficiaries were Christian. So he could not have done that mm. because his job is only to preside over matters. So no jurisdiction. Islam. No jurisdiction. Okay. She expressed concern that the Muslim court intended to proceed with the hearing and determination of the succession case and the distribution of the dead man's estate despite lack of jurisdiction. Mm. And she said, now this must be recalled. And that is exactly what the court has done. That he did not have jurisdiction mm. to do that. And if we're going to go to court, bring it to the bring high court. Bring it courts. to the high court. Interesting. Very. The cabinet met yesterday. The president has been in Western Kenya. Mm. And where the president is, the cabinet so meets. Shall, so shall the cabinet <laughs> be. <laughs> yes. So they met yesterday and they adopted far-reaching changes that will see NHIF split into three separate funds. I am so confused. Oh I looked at that cabinet brief. God. I was like, waga waga. Wag. We were preparing. We were looking at NHIF regulations, which were going to increase the NHIF contribution per person, right? Mm -hmm. And this was to come into effect before October when we launch the what affordable no not no. House of universal, universal health, health coverage, coverage plan. Right? Yeah. Gavla Binvu. This NHIF that you know, forget about Spit it. Three ways. We are recommending that we repeal the NHIF Act. We clear, we create three. <laughs> In the changes, NHIF will be split into primary health care fund, social health insurance fund, and emergency chronic and critical critical illness fund. In a bid to accelerate universal health coverage. You know what I see. You tell me. I see a situation, or rather, I see what they might be trying to deal with when people join the fund mm. and they tell you you have to wait for six months before we treat you if you're in critical care. It could be that that is what they're trying to address here. Remember that if you join an NHIF today, you start to contribute, you cannot uh, access services immediately, right? Yeah. So maybe one of those funds will then, the emergency, and what fund did you call it? This one of critical. Emergency Chronic and Critical Illness Fund. Uh -huh. And you happen to have one <clears> of those. <throat> that fund will be specific for folks like that. Sour. But then, yeah. do, they, do, you, do you contribute to the three of them 
what what happens to deductions every month? Yeah. What? Or is it spread across? How's this the gonna three? be? How's this gonna work? Actually, it's true. Are I'm we creating three diff, three entities, three boards, three management, three? What are we doing? Um, I'm I'm uncomfortable. What's 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 gonna happen? I don't understand. Ah. I, I don't like it. Now that you've said it like that, I don't understand. And I don't like what I don't understand. I um. Maybe they explain to us, Abby. We have to wait for this explanation because I think this has just come from left side. There had been, had you ever heard about this kind of thinking? No. That maybe the way we to actually roll out this NHI, this uh, universal health coverage is if we split NHIF. Um, so if, if you have a primary health care fund, Hussein Mohammed, the state house spokesperson, said the establishment of the three funds arises from the comprehensive reorganization of the 550 billion shillings allocated to the overall health expenditure. So basically, they've looked at where is the money going, okay? So they're saying one is the primary health care fund. You can imagine primary health care is looking at primary health care level one, dispensary, those ones, right? Another one deals with social health insurance. Social health insurance means that we are supporting indigents, right? And the other one is then the emergency, critical, <coughs> chronic, chronic, and all. Yeah. But are they to be managed by one entity? Are they? Are we amalgamating these three new funds into one? What's going to happen? Are they still all under the body of NHIF? That's and the thing. Because now we can't call it NHIF anymore. It's not because no longer it's not NHIF. One fund. It's, it's, it's I, that's. It is completely confusing, and we have to now wait and hear. I don't get it. What exactly is going to happen? Um, we'll look for them, the principal secretaries and the cabinet secretary for health, and also the NHF bosses come and start uh, teaching us. Mm. You, they were just going around telling us about this new regulation. So do the regulations stop? What happens to the ones that had just been... They were just discussing the them. The other day. Yeah. What happens to that? They have been going through public participation for NHIF regulations. What happens to those regulations? If these three bills go to parliament and they are passed by parliament and the president assents to them as law, so does your employer now deduct three times? I don't get it. Huh. Mambo Mengi. Huh. Or is your, is your deduction of that however much then split three ways? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it goes into one, into the same, but then it goes into different pockets of the same kitty. Yeah. That uh, out of that, the allocation will be that you allocate. You allocate out of every, every the 550 billion shillings spent mm. or however much money NHIF has it stored, you will spend X amount of money dedicated to primary health care. You will set aside X amount of money dedicating it to this. You will set aside X amount of money looking at the social health insurance side. Mimi si jui. Mimi. Here. Understand. Here. I have not understood <coughs> it at all. In three seconds. Yes. Babu Awino walks free in DJ's shooting case. And Bakasi <coughs> East MP Babu Awino is a free man after being declared uh, after being cleared of any wrongdoing in the shooting and wounding of Felix Arinda, aka DJ Evolve, two years ago. And interestingly enough, the court declared for lack of several things, and the biggest one was lack of evidence. Mm. That they could not prove if actually this bullet came from this gun. Yeah. One of the things that was in the ruling yesterday. I thought that was really interesting. They basically just said, well, you have not shown not me how proven. this man that you've brought before court yeah. fired, fired this from his gun. From his gun and that this bullet and that this bullet is, is what, that, what that, was injured, that injured this pers yeah. particular person. Imagine. Aye. Many say it's a technicality. But Aye. Aye. <laughs> well, keep it here for more. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newsroom Dennis Aseto. 
The KDF recruitment exercise continues today with the department warning that those with intentions of being corrupt will be arrested and taken to court. EACC's Eric Ngumbi says those giving and receiving bribes will be prosecuted. Yeah, moja, tano, tano, moja. Toll free line 1551. Vile vile, tume ya EACC ina watadharisha wanainja kana kwamba sheria imetroa adhabu kwa yule ambaye anapokea yule ambaye anaitisha yule ambaye anapeana ama yule ambaye anauliza e, nafasi ya kupeana Gumbi statement comes after an incident where two people were arrested in Kilifi County for accepting a bribe to enable a Kenyan be registered in the army. Sally Mohamed Shekue and his colleague Frederick Hamisibaya are in custody after demanding a 250,000 shillings bribe claiming to have influence to enable the complainant to enter the army without following the due procedure. Eh, wawili hawa eh, wadetiwa mbaroni eh, katika eh, sub-county ya Mangarini kule county ya Kilifi baada ya tume ya ESC e, kupitia afisa zake za malindi e, kupata malalamiko kana kwamba hawa ni baadhi ya e, wakora a, ama e, wa, wa, washukiwa wengine ambao e, wanazunguka wakiokota hela kwa wananchi e, wakijifanya kana kwamba wana uwezo na wana connections ambazo zinaweza e, kutumika ili e, kuwasaidia watu kuanjiriwa kwa KDF a, bila kufua wata ule utaratibu eh, ambao umewekwa kisheria According to Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Kutu many who participated in the registration did not have genuine academic certificates as required From the beginning we been unable to uh, undertake as various stages whereby those not uh, fit depending on the Kenya Defence Forces uh, uh, criteria we been able to uh, release them and the main reason is uh, uh, producing certificates which are uh, uh, not original that is they are photocopies some of them come uh, with the age that is beyond 26 years uh, which is not according to uh, what we are looking for and others they came to the wrong uh, uh, division that is they come from outside we are Kiani West the National Police Service unveiled new uniform designs as it embarked on the public participation exercise on the proposed colors for the country's security personnel. The new designs were displayed during the inaugural public forum at the Kenya Police Pavilion, South Sea. Ahead of the other similar forums across the country, Inspector General of Police Javed Kome and a few junior officers first donned the new proposed uniform in February, eliciting mixed reactions. And the police constable has been arrested in Homa Bay County for cutting his boss with a panga after they allegedly disagreed over a suspect who was arrested and detained. The police officer alleged to pile a police post in the Wasab County is accused of assaulting his boss identified as Coach Kimutai. Kimutai, who is the head pile police post, was assaulted by his junior after they allegedly disagreed over a suspect who had been arrested. It is reported that Kimutai realized a suspect who had been arrested and detained in their cell was missing. The government has elevated 13 technical and vocational colleges to national polytechnic status to enhance access to higher education. The policy framework requires that at least one national polytechnic is established in each county and a TVET institution in every constituency. The elevated institutions are Masai Technical Training Institute, Kiambu Institute of Science and Technology, Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology, Coast Institute of Technology, Sekuru Technical and Training College, and Sangal. Institute of Science and Technology, among others. And the government is seeking to repeal the National Health Insurance Fund to introduce three models of funding. In a dispatch, the cabinet said the move will accelerate Kenya's attainment of universal health coverage. This is in line with the Kenya Kwanzaa's plan under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. They also approved four health bills, including the Primary Health Care Bill of 2023, the Digital Health Bill of 2023, the Facility Improvement Financing Bill of 2023, and the Social Health Insurance Bill of 2023. Now, as Milo Moji, one Kenya allied senators have condemned President William Ruto's remarks in Bungoma concerning cartels frustrating the sugar industry where business investor just one Rai was adversely mentioned, led by Senate Minority Leader Stewart Mansayo. They castigated the remarks, saying it amounted to callous threats aimed at clawing back the gains made in the Constitution. This is News I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning.
Spice FM, Nakuru. And just like magic, at a few minutes after 7 o'clock, we are looking at traffic in different parts of the city this morning. It's starting to get heavy on the thicker superhighway. And we're also looking at traffic coming in from Kangunda Road. It's all going to join on Outer Ring and then heading out towards the CBD as well. That's where most of the movement is this morning. Some on Jogo Road, in and outbound traffic on Landis Road is starting to look terrible already. And then getting on to Haile Selassie at the Kamkunji Roundabout. And also traffic coming in from Gong Road is also going to make the CBD a beehive of activity. On Uhuru Highway, it's coming in from Nyaya Stadium, the roundabouts, all the way through into the CBD as well. And we're looking at a little bit of movement here and there. Cabanas going towards North Airport Road and then towards the Eastern Bypass. Apart from that, doesn't look too bad. Probably around 7 o'clock is where we'll see more of it. We'll be here to let you know what it looks like. Help us out as well. How do you do that? You X us on Spice FM KE. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. Seven minutes this after seven is minutes the minutes Situation minutes. Room. The second hour of the Situation Room this Wednesday, 30th day of August. 2023 tomorrow 31 friday once like that and the year is just going you need to be very careful about this language of yours you're starting huh? to corrupt some of us who speak properly what is proper first that's not proper proper is once <laughs> once tuned <laughs> <laughs> it's making stuff up as you go along. how do you write it once <laughs> Tuned. And then, <laughs> Three. <laughs> <that's gonna laughs> say. Fourth. Oh, fourth, fourth is the one that makes yeah. sense for you. All that right. Goes. Okay. It works that way. Okay. I'm not gonna eat People soon, are listening you know. to you. Soon, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the situation room. If you're just joining us on KTN News and KTN Home, Asante Sana. We are live and also live on Spice FM across the country, live on YouTube and Facebook. The Situation Room broadcasts every week the morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. It's Eric Latif and Ndu Oko today. CT Muga called us yesterday and told us, Mambo ni tatu. Muleta studio hapa kwa nyumba. Ama muzime station. Ama mufanya yo show pekeen. Mambo ni ngapi? Tatu. Atuta sumbuana. Sijuka yeah. matuko pamoja. Tunaelewana? Yes. Sasa, we chose one option. <laughs> the other two option were number three. That's the other one. How do we carry this thing and take it to city's home? Mm. How do we zoom the studio? Sasa, so, tukenda ile hata? Tatu. Wacha tufanya tu show. Mm. Atakuja. Atakuja. Mm. We're joined by Mr. Stanley Kamangoya. Stanley is the boss at ICTA the Chief Executive Officer at the ICT Authority. Stanley, good morning. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. That's the hot seat of the situation room. How do you feel? Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it's rather hot. Buana, buana. Surely. It's supposed to be, it's not even hot. It's cold. <laughs> but you can handle it. Thank you very much. Eh, yes. sana. Yeah. You'll tell us about the ICT authority, what you do. We know about the ICT ministry. Of course, we've heard about this authority before. And the work of digitizing the country. Mambo ni tano kwa hii agenda ya Kenya Kwanza. Okay. The fifth one, like you keep saying, is digital mm -hmm. transformation. So near you. Mm -hmm. The others we know. Iko nyumba, iko chakula, iko kasi ya ofijana, ishasla, iko afya. Yingine atano, ICT. And this is why 
Mr. Kamangoya is here. To do CT's job is to first welcome you with the day's proverb, which is uh, the proverbs this week are from South Africa. So today's proverb says, when a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. When a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. What do you make of that, Stanley? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Eric. That's a very interesting uh, proverb. Mm. Um, uh, and I think really what it speaks to us about is uh, building from the experiences of other people. Uh, you know, in both our individual lives, but also our professional lives. I think that's the best I can make, mm. you know, out of, out of our proverb. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So use other yes. people's experiences to better your own. That's correct. To build your own. Yes. Ah, a good one. Yeah. Tell us about ICT Authority. What is it? Uh, once again, uh, thank you and uh, good morning, um, uh, our listeners and uh, viewers. The ICT Authority is a state agency under the Ministry of ICT that is really charged with the mandate of... Uh, enabling the government to deliver <clears throat> the digital economy. And I think you have uh, clearly indicated that uh, the government has been very deliberate in identifying ICT as a key enabler for um, digital economy. But allow me to step back and really ask ourselves, you know, why is ICT actually important? Mm. If you look at the traditional um, view of ICT, even in uh, private organizations, ICT used to be a small department hidden somewhere mm -hmm. um, where people used to go if they have a small issue with their, with their computers. Mm. And really, the role of ICT was only seen to uh, replace people's jobs. Mm -hmm. The company was saying, we need to increase efficiency of the company and productivity but the people viewed it uh, initially as a bad thing for them yeah and in government also it was very similar where the drive for ICT was around productivity and efficiency but this has since evolved in a big big way right now the Innovations in ICTs have opened up immense opportunities in all the sectors. For example, if you look at the health sector, right now uh, we are saying medical doctors can actually collaborate during a procedure. Doctors in Kenya can collaborate with doctors in Canada uh, through the use of ICT. We are now able to see uh, remote consultations in the area of uh, medical. Go to the uh, something like education. You saw the, during the pandemic how ICT really helped us to revolutionize and deliver education for the country through digital platforms. Education has since become cheaper because of ICT. Uh, people are able to do online learning. Uh, there are many cheap courses that are available online. Mm. Uh, and also the area of communication and digital uh, inclusion participation in the society in terms of inclusion of, uh, of the people, it has really opened up. So really, our mandate as the ICT authority is to help the country to tap in, into the opportunities that exist mm -hmm. in the digital space. And we do it in three, uh, three ways broadly. First is the citizen-facing uh, uh, empowerment, mm -hmm. where we are saying, at the end of uh, the day, we want our citizens to be more connected, more empowered, and more intelligent through ICT for them to be able to improve their quality of lives and take advantage of the digital space. Mm. We also, the second aspect of our work is to drive what we call an intelligent government. We want a government that uh, enables sharing of citizen data across this, uh, the, 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 the government agencies yep. so that then citizens can be able uh, to have a seamless, you know, um, interaction mm -hmm. with the government regardless of the agency. We want a government that is data-driven that can be able to uh, drive policies 
through uh, data analysis mm -hmm. to inform policy decisions. And we want a government that is uh, citizen-centric. And our work really is to modernize and digitize uh, the government for it to operate efficiently and serve the citizens, uh, you know, in a more efficient manner. Mm -hmm. Then the third aspect of it is just to provide the enabling environment, both from an infrastructure perspective and also legal and regulatory uh, perspective for the government to do that, the citizens to do that, and the private sector to play its part uh, in that journey. Mm -hmm. So that is really our mandate. That's what you do. Yes. Is this advisory or is it things that you actually do? When you talk about, for example, having an intelligent government, um, you want to make sure that the government is digitized, we have uh, digitized services and all. Do you do it or do you advise other agencies to do it? We actually are charged with a design and implementation. Mm -hmm. of critical government systems. So we do not only develop uh, the standards for the government to, to follow, but all the critical government infrastructure we actually deploy. We also advise other agencies on other systems mm -hmm. that they are doing. So we play both roles of uh, implementation for the critical government uh, infrastructure and an advisory role to the government to the agencies government. Mm -hmm. for the other systems. So is eCitizen under you? That's correct. eCitizen is, uh, is under us. We support the, the eCitizen technology. Uh, we manage the, the, the eCitizen platform and uh, in collaboration with the other stakeholders, including the Ministry of uh, Interior, we are then, uh, you know, driving the digitization of government. Mm. Yes. What would Kenyans look around and see happening in the country that would then now be able to draw a string from that thing that comes then back to the authority? Thank you very much because, uh, you know, most of the things that the authority do mm. are mostly not visible to uh, the citizens. Mm. And we always compare ourselves with the, with the road uh, sector. The road sector, I, I mean, I've gotten here through the expressway. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that was done by the road sector. But what you don't know, within the same expressway, on the sides, we have our fiber infrastructure cable. Mm -hmm. And part of it is also underground. Mm -hmm. So first, um, the first thing that uh, we do that the citizens can relate to mm -hmm. is the deployment of digital infrastructure in the country. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, uh, you know, witnessed or consumed by the citizens through the services they use uh, for communication mm. and internet connectivity. I can tell you that in one way or another, the person who provides internet uh, to your house or to your offices yeah. actually rely on the ICT authority to provide the backbone uh, fiber optic uh, infrastructure for them to deliver uh, those services. Mm. When you go to the other space around uh, uh, digital services, mm. I think you have just mentioned um, the e-citizen uh, system, which is actually one component of the work we are doing to digitize the, the government. Mm -hmm. And the uh, you know, the other component is around digitization of government records yeah. and automation of back-end processes so that then the citizens can actually experience. When you go to the Ministry of Land, now you can be able to do your searches online. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the ICT authority that has supported that technology so that then uh, we make the experience of our citizens with the government uh, a bit more joyous. People, mm. uh, you know, get less and less frustrated moving from one office to another. You can now transact a lot of government business from the comfort of your office or, or your home, uh, courtesy of, of, of the ICT or ICT authority. I think the other major uh, program that we are rolling out under the digital superhighway is really the public Wi-Fi. Yep which 
uh, interestingly, uh, Eric, the level of interest that uh, this has uh, raised with our citizens is enormous. And we are seeing enormous amount of uh, consumption of data through this public Wi-Fi service. Mm. And through this public Wi-Fi service, you know, we are saying we are not only bringing connectivity to the people at uh, the markets and the bus stops and all the public areas, but we are also enabling them to be able to take advantage of uh, the opportunities in the digital space. In the digital space. Yes. So, before we get to the Wi-Fi, you are in charge of the uh, fiber infrastructure backbone. That's right. Correct. Yes. Uh, there is this project called what, NOFIB. Is it still in existence? The National Optic Fiber Instra Infrastructure Backbone. Yes. Which is basically looking at connecting the entire country through fiber optic. When the PS and the CS were here before, we talked about, you know, rolling out this fiber into ward level, into village level. Then we start having these uh, village kiosks that are connected to the national fiber infrastructure. And then that's when we start rolling out now the other services. You are the ones in charge of that hard cable, the fiber cable. That's correct. You're the one in charge of ma managing it, maintaining it, and rolling it out across the country. That's correct. How much more do we have to do to actually get the entire country connected? Thank you very much. Uh, we have a lot to do. So first, let me start with uh, where we are as a country in terms of internet connectivity and uh, penetration. As of now, about 42% of our population have access to the internet. So what does that tell you? We have about 58% to cover. Mm. So that's the first aspect, increasing connectivity. The second aspect of it is around the costs. How much money are we spending uh, for us to actually consume the internet connectivity. Mm. The costs have been coming down uh, over time, but we believe we have a huge scope to be able to reduce the costs. So how are we addressing these two issues? In the, in the national uh, transformation agenda under the, the, the current administration, we have uh, identified 100,000 kilometers of fiber. And we are saying the government alone within the short time that we have mm. may not be able to deliver it and deliver it uh, fully. So what we have done is to identify a section of that work that will be done by the private sector. So we have identified what is going to be done by the private sector mm. and what is going to be done by, by the government. And the approach is the government is going to invest in the backbone uh, fiber optic cable for areas that the private sector do not deem commercially viable. Mm -hmm. The private sector is then going to take up that backbone cable and then distribute it to the businesses and to the homes around. So we are saying... Uh, we are lessening the burden for the private sector mm. to make to make them easy to go into investments of uh, of the of the of the infrastructure with a quicker return on investment. Mm -hmm. When we do that, uh, it then means if a private sector uh, company was going to charge you X amount, we have reduced the the overall outlay capital they would have done to reach you they need then to reduce their costs for you to be able to consume the service. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of it is collaboration between government agencies. We do have a number of agencies that uh, have been deploying fiber optic cable. Largely, uh, some of them have done it for their, their own internal use. Independent of... The ICT Independent authority. of the ICT authority. For example, we have uh, Kenya Power, mm. who uh, run uh, quite a number of kilometers of fiber. We have uh, Kenya Pipeline, who run it to manage the, their pipeline, and so on and so forth. So we're also saying 
we leverage on each other so that on routes where a government agency has already developed or implemented fiber we don't need to go into that route but it, this is where the question comes in mm. yes by the time kenya pipeline is rolling out the, uh, their fiber along their pipeline or by the time ketraco is putting their fiber on the pylons or kenya power is putting fiber on their on their where was the ict authority yes it so should, that collaboration should have been there from the very beginning this is it so you guys have uh, infrastructure you have a pipeline you need to use the service so this is how we work you shall roll out the fiber sounds like you are coming you you're backpacking on them thank you thank you for for that observation uh i think it may appear so uh but there are a number of reasons why we have gotten ourselves into this into this situation mm. first our infrastructure has been built over a long time and in phases so you may find that uh, for example kenya pipeline required a certain section before we were there and therefore they were allowed to do that section because the ict authority had gone had not gone into that section kenya power the same mm. but now as we close in what we are saying is really instead of going and build where kenya power has already built or kpc has already built we leverage on that uh, infrastructure and we are not only doing it for public sector we are also doing it for the private sector and we are encouraging the private sector we have now established a register at the ict authority where we are saying let the private sector come to us and tell us where have you laid uh, your fiber infrastructure so that the next time uh company x wants to deploy in a certain route they can quickly refer to us and we can tell them company y already, already has already infrastructure on, on this this is my issue let us Stanley. let us collaborate yes this is my the ict authority was established when 13 years ago yes, uh, yes 2013 10 years ago 10 actually years ago. eric we are celebrating 10 years uh, this year okay yeah. so when the ict authority was established it came and took over from something else that was there what was there before kenya ict board yes yes the ict board when we were landing our fiber optic cables in mombasa the ict board was in place and the ict board is the one that started rolling out this national fiber optic backbone right they started doing it they are the ones who were basically doing what the ict authority is doing now yeah i look at it as the ict authority has been in existence for more than 10 years okay and this is why i say when we see all these cables people coming and digging up the grounds every le- every now and then every day there's somebody who's digging up a cable somewhere when we see pipeline doing their thing when we see kenya power doing their thing when you see somebody else coming up and saying you know what i need fiber so i'm going to dig up the ground that just shows me that there is a lack of coordination with the agency that should be coordinating all this work the ict authority has just basically like been sitting and, and and suddenly waking up and realizing oh my god people have done the fiber we need to catch up with them yeah so uh again it's 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 a good observation uh and i'm sure you've seen it even in in the neighborhoods i think we don't have a problem with the government agencies we've been able to control that over time because uh for them to undertake in infrastructure deployment they have had to clear with the, with the ICT authority i think for the public sector agencies what we are saying is going forward we are only going to collaborate better so that nobody needs to invest or put in infrastructure where um the government has already done so through another agency and and that is not a problem the biggest issue we've been facing is in the private sector uh because the approach has been more competitive than collaborative yeah. and now we are requesting and working with the private sector stakeholders if we are to achieve our dream of digitally connecting our country we have to be cautious of how we spend our investments whether it's from government or it's from the private sector mm-hmm. and what we are saying simply is if an estate has already uh, been fed through company x before company y comes and deploy their cable they should come to us and check who has 
either backbone or what we call metro infrastructure in that area and we can tell them who that person is and they can go and negotiate uh, whether this company has some leeway to give them some capacity or to carry them within their cable so that then they can serve their customers. Then they can channel that investment to another section of the country mm. where nobody has made that investment. But then you have to regulate how the, that, that negotiation takes place. Because one person can just basically claim monopoly. I laid out my cables, and so everybody, you've been sent by the ICT authority. <laughs> Come. Uh, I'm charging. See me. Yeah, I'm charging X. Yeah, because if you're going to piggyback on my cable, I'm the one who put it here. I put in the investment to have it done. I made sure that manpower and the man hours then that we invested in here, you cannot then come and tell me that you will lay your own, which is what is happening right now. Yep. Other folks are coming and laying side by side, and we have, you know, cities dug up. Oh, so we have issues. We have issues with quality. We have issues with every so often. Kenha has to come and do pavements, uh, Kura, because somebody came and dug up the road because they were putting in a new cable. They're an ICT provider. Where's the authority, man? Yeah, so um, thank you for that. So we have done two things to address that. Uh, one is that uh, from a regulatory and legal perspective, mm. We are pushing for the critical infrastructure bill and also the ICT bill, the ICTA bill, which yeah. will help us to enforce some of those issues that, uh, that, that you're speaking about. But then in the interim, we have actually developed some standards for fiber optic installation um, that not only lays out the quality of, of the fiber cable to be laid, but also, you know, the structure in terms of the design. And we are working uh, with, the, with the private sector to continuously review and improve these designs. Mm. But really, I think we are taking a sector approach and asking all of us in the ICT sector, and especially this area of uh, digital infrastructure, to really work together for us. We are more than ready and willing, and we have started those efforts of collaborating, uh, I mean, enhancing collaboration and coordinating uh, the efforts both by government and the private sector so that mm. we can achieve the 100,000 kilometers. Let's freedom. continue the conversation shortly. Yeah. Stanley Kamangoya is the CEO of the ICT Authority. He's here with us to talk about the state of the ICT sector in Kenya, the impact that the authority and the work that it does has on the digital transformation agenda of the government. 27 minutes to 8, Kenya's biggest conversation takes a break. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Three, two. Everybody, welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Hey, Heri Latifa, Sit Muga, Madam Du, Nive Salami, Awoke Sana. Tumepokea salamu, asante sana. Hapa Garisa, today the weather is very good, only that Baridi na tupeleka mbio sana. So Baridi ni degree ngapi ya? <laughs> if you want to follow the money trail, you've got to think like a thief to be able to catch that thief. A slap from a friend is better than a kiss from an enemy. You remember the kiss of uh, Judas Iscariot? Iscariot. Iscariot. Yes. He's the one that they met with Kwai Mashidayot and Amatabu. Was Abu of that kiss? Yet the slap of Jesus Christ when he slapped those guys in Yalikuana Uza Uza, Mboga and Dani Akanisa, took them to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Cloudy at 15 in Nairobi, highs of 22 and lows of 13 today. We'll see lows of 13 in a cloudy, uh, partly sunny Nakuru. Cloudy at 14 in Nyeri, highs of 22 and highs of 22 as well. In a sunny Eldoret at 13. It's partly sunny at 24 in Mombasa, highs of 29 and lows of 23. And we'll see lows of 24 in a sunny Malindi at 25, going to highs of 29. It's cloudy at 19 in Kisumu, highs of 29, and we'll see highs of 27 in a partly sunny Kakamega at 18. It's 19 and cloudy in Kampala, highs of 28 and lows of 17, and we'll see highs of 30 in a partly sunny Dar es Salaam at 25. 8 degrees and mostly clear in Johannesburg, highs of 22, and we'll see highs of 29 in a partly cloudy Lagos at 25. It's 23 and partly cloudy in Kinshasa, highs of 20, uh, highs of 31, and lows of 23. Spice 
up your life. All right, so at a few minutes after 7.30, we're looking at and um, getting into traffic hour. We're seeing a little bit of movement now having increased in most parts of the city. It's heavier on the thicker superhighway coming in from Kiambu Road. It's going to be a slight bit of a pickle as then it's heavy going towards Mathaiga Square. It's also pretty busy coming off of Limuru Road today, and that's all feeding off from United Nations Avenue coming in from Kitisuru. All that then leading on Limuru Road through the city. Wangari Mathai is also starting to pack up as it is on Chiromo in and outbound traffic towards Wangari Mathai and then in towards the city going to Westland or the CBD. All right, also busy on Jogoro, on James Gishoro, uh, coming off Gong Road, also some busyness there. The southern bypass, as you're trying to get out towards Gong Road, is also taking up some of that busyness this morning. We're in traffic hour now. Let's see what hap- how it happens closer to 8 o'clock. Our intent is to keep things moving this morning. Talk to us on Spice FM, KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. 23 minutes to 8 on conversation. The ICT authorities, Hanli Kamangoya, hosted by Eric Latif and Ndu Oko. Mm. So looking at um, all of this, and it's just to say that there is a plan. There is a goal that is being reached to have Kenya essentially on the digital map. Um how and in what sectors will we then see that the greatest gains can be made to say that, yes, uh, in terms of uh, being on the digital highway, Kenya is where it ought to be? Or is it still at a level of aspiration? So thank, th- thank you very much. Um, and I think I'll just go back to the, you know, the remarks made by your colleague, uh, Eric. Mm that um, you know in the current administration the government has actually identified five thematic areas mm. which um we see as the main drivers for 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 for, for the digital uh, economy and uh, those specific sectors identified are actually our first main focus to support mm-hmm with ICT, both as a driver and as an enabler. So we have started doing a lot of work um, in the health uh, healthcare uh, area, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, visioning of how a healthcare system should look like, uh, what experience do we want our citizens to have when we go to, to hospitals, and so on and so forth. So that is one of the uh, critical sectors that we have uh, we have we have we have been focusing on as the first beneficiaries of 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 this process the other uh, key sector is lands and settlement and you've seen the work we have done with the adi sasa system mm-hmm. which is now already integrated into into the e citizen uh, again to help us deal with the issues of uh, um, of land searches and mm-hmm. transfers and, uh, and and so on those are some of the priority sectors, mm-hmm. you know, that, that we have focused on. But also, uh, in tandem with that, we are very much focused on, as we deploy this infrastructure, how do we enable our citizens to tap in, into these opportunities? Because the government is spending or is investing a lot in deployment of the infrastructure. Right. Mm. But how do we unlock the value for the citizens? Exactly. So, um, we have a number of initiatives which we are undertaking. One, I think I spoke about the the public Wi-Fi, which, uh, if you allow me, I'll just go back and touch on briefly because Mm. it's a a critical component. Mm. Uh, First of all, uh, when we first deployed the public Wi-Fi in the pilot phase, late last year. We realized that the public Wi-Fi, people are enjoying it for social uh, benefits, right. communication, uh, YouTube downloads, and so on and so forth. Now we have slowly geared uh, our citizens towards using the public Wi-Fi services for e-commerce. Mm-hmm. 
So what we have done, as we deploy the public Wi-Fi, we are also deploying for them an e-commerce portal, which we are calling G-Connect Soko, where traders can go in. It's called what? G-Connect Soko. G-Connect. Dot G-O dot K, yes. G-Connect Soko. Okay. So traders can go in, they register, and they can be able to upload their wares and their services online, and this instantly opens up, um, you know, a big market for them, both in uh, the localities where they are, but also in other parts of the country. We are working very closely to uh, close the fulfillment bit uh, for delivery with the Postal Corporation of Kenya. So very soon, we're going to onboard uh, the, the Postal Corporation of Kenya onto that portal, so that when you make an order through the G-Connect Soko, you know, once you pay, your, you can actually get the delivery to your home. The other critical thing that we are doing through the public Wi-Fi mm. is to also enable the traders to be able to learn about their products online. So avail uh, product-specific information, mm. uh, depending if it's an agricultural market, then those traders have access to information about, about those products. They can educate themselves. They can see what uh, the country trends, uh, the world trends are around their products. Then, for areas where young people would uh, necessarily congregate around bus parks mm. and open areas, mm. we are training them to be able to start looking at the digital jobs that are available, the, the simple digital jobs that are available on the online space. Mm. So we, th we know that uh, this, this one service of the public Wi-Fi is really going to unlock a lot of economic uh, opportunities for, for the traders, the young people, and the citizens uh, mm. in general. Stanley, just the, take me through yes. how this public Wi-Fi works. Uh, Take one place. Where do you have city market? Yes, city market. We have. We have. So Ukulima if I go market. to city market, yes. What do I do? Do I, I see a, a notification that tells me there's X X X Wi Fi available, mm. or how, take me through that whole connection? Yes. So thank you. Um, the public Wi Fi for you to access the public Wi Fi. You when you go to a place where there's uh, government public Wi Fi. We have called it GOK uh, public Wi-Fi, and it's free. That simple. The public yes, G -O -K it's public, public Wi-Fi, wi and it's simple. No underscore, it's no hyphen, nothing. Mm. Okay. GOK public Wi-Fi. So you either go to your settings, uh, and you act. You, if your if your of course if your Wi-Fi settings are not on, you need to set them on. Mm. Then you will just go in and you access for free. No password. No password required. Okay. So the security measures for the public Wi-Fi is in the background. Mm -hmm. You don't need a username and a password uh, for you to access the service. It's a, it's a password free uh, service. Okay. Then you can be able to consume the service. And that's it. What's that the range? So uh, it depends from market to market, but on average, depending on how big the market is, we're also uh, extending outside the market up to about 100 meters. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you're within the vicinity for 100 meters of that area, you should be able to access uh, that service comfortably. Okay. Mm. Now this now brings in the issue of cyber security. Um, we've had experts here on ICT who've said, be careful about this public, public. Wi-Fi because you don't know whether this is actually a genuine public Wi-Fi or it's a scam being run by somebody who's sitting somewhere and they just want to access your data. So how do you safeguard users who are now going to find this GOK public Wi-Fi? Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we have taken a uh, two-pronged approach uh, to this issue of, uh, of cyber security. Mm. And uh, we always say safety begins with you. So the first thing we do is to actually create awareness to the citizens of how uh, they need to conduct themselves when they're online. And it is not only about GOK public Wi-Fi. It is a cross-board mm. because whatever internet access you use, 
the risk are the same mm -hmm. so we have an elaborate uh, security sensitization program we call it uh, usalama mtandaoni uh, where everywhere we go we sensitize uh, our users on it and you know it's also available through 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 our channels because really the users need to be aware of what they need to do uh, to take care of themselves for so example no matter how aware i am yes. all right so i know that the government public wifi is called gok public wifi all right i know that you have it in some several public places i don't know exactly how many or which ones if a scammer decides to go to now you're in city market they go to kenyatta market and they set up something and they call it gok public wi-fi and they make it free and available people will come and use it how will somebody verify that what i am seeing here called gok public wi-fi is actually the true gok public wi-fi so th thank you thank you for um for that um for that question eric so maybe just i go back to my initial um uh response because i addressed the issue of the user side then the second approach to secure the public wi-fi and maybe this will uh, will, will will answer your question mm -hmm. is the measures we have taken to protect uh the citizens from the back end and you know uh if someone sets up a public wi-fi yeah uh it cost money mm -hmm. yep. to set up a public wifi yeah so most probably this person is probably trying to fish data from you exactly or uh, you know something of that sort or to gain access to your phone or to your phone whatever applications so the first thing you need to know is for us we never ask you for any personal information so first if a public wifi purported to be gok is asking you for personal information you know pin name whatever it is um then that is not a gok public wifi and it is true it is possible mm. for somebody to actually set up a public wifi and name copy our name yeah so that 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 is that is that is a possibility but from our end what we have also done is we have uh, been cautious to filter uh, traffic we have you know the tools and equipments and softwares to be able uh, to filter traffic so that if someone tries to uh, for example using our service login into uh, a certain website a number of times mm. then we should be able to flag it yeah and uh, you know stop 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 the service we have also separated uh, the traffic for public wi-fi so that it doesn't interfere with the rest of government because also there's a risk of people pushing yeah, that, as an entry. Uh, yeah. that as an entry to government system so that is completely separate mm. so but we are saying even with the security measures that we have taken we have a huge responsibility for the citizens to be res responsible and learn about cyber hygiene which we have taken upon ourselves to to educate on how are you educating people stanley uh thank you i think uh and you know digital skills is not just about the public wi-fi it's another critical component of our work and we are saying if we are going to really unlock the digital economy we have to have a mindset change and we have to have a skill set change and we have to look at uh, this issue from the entire value chain the education value chain so uh, if you may recall we had an intensive program a few years ago we were calling digital learning uh, program literacy program mm. which was targeting the private uh, i mean the public uh, primary schools where we deployed about 1.1 1, 1, 1 devices yeah. developed content uh, in collaboration with uh, with uh, with the uh, KICD and deployed trained uh, teachers in conjunction with TSC and they were able to to scale you know that that program we are also looking at now so at a high at, at a low level uh basic education we have certain programs which we are developing 
and those are already you know rolled out in collaboration with the, with the KICD. At the intermediary level, you know, as uh, students leave universities mm. and so on, uh, we are also we have also developed uh, a curriculum. In fact, after this session, I have a stakeholder engagement where we are reviewing the curriculum for that particular uh, caliber of citizen because we are saying mm. the young people leaving form four and university are going to come into the workforce so we need to prepare them adequately for the digital space then of course we have the people who are already working both in private sector and public sector yeah so again for the public sector our role really for training is uh, around the public sector side we we are also deploying we have uh, now what we are calling a smart academy online mm. where uh, citizens can log in and i think so far we have trained about uh, 50,000 citizens mm. on basic skills uh, on the internet which include uh, what we are discussing here on on cyber security then we have uh, you know very advanced programs for for the public sector because also really if we digitize government and we don't empower the public sector workforce then how are they going to deliver the services to the citizens? Yep. Mm. So we have an elaborate plan on uh, digital skills. Our target in the next um, five years is to actually reach to 20 million Kenyans through various platforms. This year we are targeting 5 million. We have already engaged the academia and we are saying the ICT authority can go, not go into every corner of the country. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is to collaborate with TVETs, collaborate with um, universities, and all tertiary, you know, colleges for them to be able to deliver our, our curriculum. Okay. So, you, yeah. yes. You, talked on, you touched on education. I want to go back to that a little bit uh, because in terms of getting the country switched on, a major part of that population is school going, children, and then to the tertiary level that you spoke of. Um, if anything, COVID taught us that we needed to be connected because children were out of school for a year, and they couldn't learn even when we wanted to do so digitally because a very small number of people then were able to be connected. Now, you've talked about pilot programs. In terms of wider implementation across board to make sure that schools around the country are actually connected and that they can learn digitally as well as from books, is there something like that uh, beyond what you've spoken of to actually see it happen? Not hoping for a disaster, but then as an alternate source to learning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, for the education sector, you know, we can't talk about digital learning without first of all putting in place the infrastructure to connect the schools and the TVETs and the colleges and the universities. So, and I think for probably the the tertiary education institutions mm -hmm. have a fair uh, connectivity we are working to reach you know those who are not connected on our or our NOFB. and i think we have a target of uh, about uh, 2000 institutions uh, this year in that category mm -hmm. but for the primary schools yeah for the primary school you know, the DLP program, the digital learning or digital literacy program, elicited a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a lot of investments in this area of content development. So, in fact, uh, now it's a problem of what content should be deployed. But I think uh, that is a work of, uh, of um, KCD mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Education to regulate that. For us, uh, what we are doing is we have the guidelines in terms of what uh, those software should be. And then we are, we, are, we are assisting with the deployment of connectivity to the schools and provision of the, of the devices. If, if another global pandemic were declared today and we had to go back to 2020 March and schools close, would we have continuity in learning? To a large extent of uh, our country, yes. To some of our country, uh, especially if you look at, uh, you know, towards the north, mm. we still have uh, a challenge in connectivity. And I think those are the areas that I say the government have put deliberate effort Let's do to Nairobi. extend. Yes. Okay. yes. Let's say in Nairobi, would we 
have <coughs> continuity in learning for children in Nairobi if children in Nairobi do not go to school today for an entire week? Show me how. So, um, we, we will be able to do that. How? And I'll tell you how. Mm. Uh, first, in Nairobi, I think the issues of connectivity are fairly addressed. We, of course, we have a few areas, a few pockets, yeah, where probably connectivity is not as good. But you'll be surprised, uh, Eric, even if uh, all the schools do not have sufficient laptops, and even in the program that we, we delivered uh, under DLP, we only managed to do about 1.1 million devices. You'll be surprised that as of last year's uh, data, we had about uh, 63 million active telephone lines. In Nairobi? Not in Nairobi, in the, in country. the country. 63 okay. million. So what does that tell you? That from a gadget perspective... We have the gadgets. We have the gadgets. That's not an issue. Mm. What I'm wondering is, yes. as an authority, yes. coming from the experience of 2020, where it disrupted learning for two years... Two calendar years where we just had, we don't know whether we're in Nothing. term one or term three or term four, right? Have you had those lessons and sat down with the Ministry of Education and said, okay, so this is how we address it in future should this thing happen? Our KICD, this is how you deploy online learning. Uh, institutions, you ministry, through your officers on the ground, through TSC, this is how you deliver online learning. Have you had that conversation? I'm not hearing like you have. Look, Eric, uh, the conversations have happened. Even if it's not in one structured way where we say bring all the stakeholders together, we have held conversations with different uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what uh, they need to do. Mm. Maybe what we need now to do is to really say, you know, from a disaster planning perspective for the education sector, we need to come together and see what is the support of ICT if we were to get into uh, this issue. Yeah. And this is not only on the education sector. We need to do it across board. Yes. Because uh, today's education, tomorrow, tomorrow will, be health. will be health, and so on and so forth. But, you know, the engagement with the stakeholders has, has been happening over time. Uh, probably is just to bring it to all together, mm. you know, and wrap it up and say, in case of a disaster in this sector, how do we move? Mm. And that's the mandate of the ICT authority. That's the mandate. That's to our take mandate. a lead. That's correct. That's our conversations. Yes. Okay. And we are equal to to the task, and 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 we are ready for the challenge. I think just to go back to again the the question asked in terms of some of the some of the issues mm, in thirty seconds. Yes. The, uh, uh, the other issue mm. is around uh, digital hubs. Mm -hmm. We have set out to do 1,450 uh, digital hubs in the country. Now, we are going to deploy devices in these digital hubs mm -hmm. where our youth can go, get trained. You talked about training, but also unlock uh, jobs. So we are saying if we can be able to train per shift 100 youths mm. in a day, that is uh, 14,000 of them in yeah, a day. Yeah. So, you know, you can do the maths. Mm. So we'll be able to train them. And then in about three, four months, once all these hubs are active, mm. those will quickly translate into, into, into employable, jobs. Yes. Employable people yes. and then job opportunities come yes. in. Yes. Stanley, we thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah. Come again soon. Yeah, right, so as we have a conversation, thank you. Our time is up for this conversation. Stanley Kamangoya is the CEO of the ICT Authority, he's been our guest. Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour. Good morning, 8 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newsroom Dennis Aceto.
The Law Society of Kenya wants President William Ruto to ask for forgiveness after his warning to all those who have filed cases in courts of ownership and control of the Momia Sugar Company. While addressing journalist LSK President Eric Theory says President's remarks have the potential to curtail the freedom of the courts. Theory says the society has been in communication with some lawyers involved in the case who have expressed fear of pursuing the cases further. The demand that we want to make on the president is to not only withdraw and apologize for those very very unfortunate remarks but also to allow the due process of law to take its course to its logical conclusion in a court of law we have laws that ensure equality of parties that appear before it and each party has an opportunity to present the case that they have before an impartial arbiter who is the court. Theory further says the president's remarks lend credence to reports of Cabral's sugar owner just one Singh Rai was kidnapped Friday by unknown people and later released. Immediately, Mr. Rai was abducted. The president is on record as having made statements that he will stop at nothing to resolve uh, this matter of Mumia Sugar. And yesterday, he buttressed those comments by uh, issuing the very, very chilling threats that he did to those who have filed cases with regards to the ownership and control of Mumia Sugar. So by implication, it would be uh, not far-fetched to say that the state had an hand in the abduction of Mr. Rai. There is sentiment song been backed by Haki Africa Director Hussein Khalid, who stated that the president's sentiments have the right to equal treatment before the law. Na yale matamshi ambayo ya metamkwa na rais ni kama kwamba ya mechukua katiba na kuisitisha kutotumika katika nchi yetu hii. Na sisi tunasema kwamba hilo ni swala ambalo wazi kabisa linakiuka katiba yetu na hatuwezi kukubali kama wananchi wa Kenya kurudishwa katika siku za kale ambapo ukiukaji wa haki za binadamu ulikuwa ukifanyika kiholela. The president while in Western Kenya stated that cartels had three options either to leave Kenya, go to jail or go to heaven. Now, the dialogue committee between the government and the opposition is expected to meet today to begin its official duties after being approved by both houses. Yesterday, the Senate, just as the National Assembly, approved the creation of a 10 person negotiation committee as well as another 8 person technical committee. This step means that the 60 day period that has been set aside for the negotiations officially begins today, where the chairperson of Azimio Kalonzo Musyoka and Kenya Kwanza's Kimani Shunga will sign the agendas to be discussed according to the bills of meeting in Parliament. The committee will be free to take opinions from stakeholders from every sector and representatives from other social groups, including the religious stakeholders. That the National Dialogue Committee shall report to the leadership of Kenya Kwanza and Azmeo coalitions within 60 days and thereafter submit its report to Parliament. That in the execution of its mandate, the National Dialogue Committee may invite, engage with, uh, with and consider submission from stakeholders, collect views from the public and engage experts, professionals and other technical resource persons. The technical committee created between both sides has already listed the issues that should be prioritized during the discussion. Among those issues are the designing of the IEBC commission, including the CDF and NGA funds in the constitution and implementing the gender representation question. In addition, the government wing aims to design a new fund for the Senate as well as officially design the office of the leader of the opposition. In addition, the opposition is pushing for a discussion about the cost of living, the inspection and the looking into the election records and the observance of laws of to prevent migration of political parties and interference by the government. This is news I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu
Okay, on the thicker superhighway, we're coming into the CBD. It's coming in strong at Pangani and towards the underpass and then out towards the CBD, bumper to bumper. Uh, service lanes will be done by then, so you have to follow this one route. Um, and then we go through into the CBD, right? Kambu Road also doing the same thing, coming towards Mathaiga Square. We're looking at Huru Highway, dot dot of traffic all the way from Mombasa Road out towards the city and then into Westland. That's going to continue for some time. We're in traffic hour proper now. We're also looking at traffic coming in from the northern bypass through to Kitisuru, Ruaka, and then also touching in on Kiam, uh, on Limuru Road. Not too bad coming off North Op Airport Road today. The eastern bypass, whatever ailed yesterday, seems to have healed by now. All right, CBD is where most of it is happening this morning, folks. Let's know what's going on in your neck of the woods. Want to keep things moving this Wednesday? Talk to us on Spice FM, KE on X. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the, the Situation continues. Room. It's Coming up to eight minutes after eight on this uh, second last day of August 2023. Still live on Spice FM and KTN Home and online on YouTube and Facebook. In the next conversation, we want to talk about MITI. This is the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry. We keep asking us, so MITI is how many state departments? There are two state departments. Mm -hmm. The other day we had a, a conversation with the Principal Secretary in the State Department for trade and industry, Dr. Mukwana. Today, we have a conversation with the other principal secretary in the State Department for Investment Promotion. His name is Abubakar Hassan. Abubakar, good morning. Yes. Good morning, Eric. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. As asante sana, asante. Yeah. So when you say Abubakar Hassan, we also have to add the other Abubakar. Yes, Abubakar Hassan, Abubakar. <laughs> okay. Mwuko kwa ground kwa nani tanga, Abubakar Hassan Kwiji. Kwiji. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. You remember, you're in the ground. You're in the ground. So. <laughs> Here we go, official dom. Yes. Yeah. P.S. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest Asana, conversation. Asana. That's a hot seat. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, we it's have really hosted. Hot. It, is it? I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we hosted your uh, colleague, mm. the P.S. for Trade and Industry, mm -hmm. Dr. Mukwana. He came, he told us about the State Department for Trade and Industry, about industrializing the country. Yours is investment promotion. We want yeah. to understand what exactly that means, okay. what your mandate is. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me first welcome you to the conversation mm -hmm. with the day's proverb, okay. courtesy of C.T. Muga, who unfortunately is not in today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mamboni, Mamboni tatu. Either. 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 To peleke studio kwake. Or. Ama tuzime station. Or. Ama tufanya bila ye. So now. Wacha tufanya bila ye. Bila ye. But he's watching. Yes. And he says good morning to you. Mm -hmm. So the day's proverb is from South Africa. And today's proverb is when a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. Mm -hmm. When a bird builds its nest, it's, it uses the feathers of of other birds. Okay. What's interpretation? A Swahili proverb. Uh, no, that's in Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> that's Swahili. <laughs> yeah, that's Swahili. Okay. Um, uh, I think my view is that uh, if if you if you you need to use others to to build to build something, yeah. Mm. So if you are you are doing if you have a goal, you need to have a team so that you can leverage on on their strength to uh, to achieve that. Or you cannot achieve it. You cannot achieve it alone. Mm. I you think that will be my interpretation. You've got to use others. Yes. To be able to actually achieve what you want to yes. achieve. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's all about inclusivity and collaboration. Yeah, and collaboration. Yeah. Asante. Yeah. So introduce us to the State Department for Investment Promotion. 
Good. First, the 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 Ministry of Investment, Trade, and Industry has three state departments. Not oh, two. there's the three. Yeah. One okay. is investment promotion. Right. The second one is trade, and the third one is industry. So it's called METI. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So Mukwana is a, the PS for indus industry. For industry. Yes. And there's another PS for trade. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm the PS for for investment promotion. Mm -hmm. So basically, this state department is a is a private sector state department. Its mandate is basically to continuously and constantly engage the private sector to identify areas of constraints so that we can have a reform action plan and, 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 and remove them. If there are any, any issues, incentives to be created, if there are any obstacles uh, or impediments to be removed, mm. that's its first agenda. Mm. The second agenda is to coordinate the promotion of private investments into the Kenyan economy, mm. both... Uh, domestic and, and foreign. And, and the third mandate is basically oversight of the enablers to, to enablers to investment, like uh, the, the, the special eco the economic zones, mm -hmm. incentivized ones, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like the special economic zones and, uh, and uh, extra processing zone. You know, there's another one called KAIB, mm. yes. but so far it is not incentivized. Mm. Yeah, but what falls under me are incentivized economic zones. Okay. Yes. What do you say incentivize? What do you mean? Incentivize, that means there are fiscal incentives. Okay. Yeah, because in, in an economic zone, you can have both fiscal and non-fiscal. Non-fiscal, it can be the infrastructure, which is already there mm. for you to come and just plug and play. Like just normal industrial area, all these types, we are building them in, we are building the infrastructure so that it can attract investors to come and plug and play. Mm. But so far, we have not had fiscal incentives, the tax issues yeah. around those kinds. Mm. But in special economic zones and export processing zones, or if you set up there, there are some tax holidays and such, such things. Yeah. Are we looking at the invites? I'm, I hear you then that it would be essentially an, an invite, whether open or closed, towards individuals or organizations who would then come in mm. under an investment portfolio mm. into the country and yeah. then the certain things would be done for them Yes, in order to make them or rather ease uh, doing business. Mm -hmm. So is this opened in the country? You mentioned internal and external. Yes. So this is open to investors, domestic, domestic and, and, foreign, and, foreign. and foreign investments. How does that exactly work? Do they speak their interest or they, is there something where we kind of look like an open tender where people can then come in and say, we have this available. These are the places where you can come essentially and plug and play because we set up these zones mm -hmm. because that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. These zones are plug and play. Yes. The, the infrastructure has been set up. Yep. You come in and do business. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. Is it then opened up? It's open up. Okay. Yeah. How Kenya, does that the message, work? Our, our, our message to investors, both domestic and foreign, is that Kenya is open for business. Mm -hmm. It's ready for business and we mean business. So it's open. Mm -hmm. Like even in February, we did a market sounding of, uh, we advertised all our special economic zones, especially the Dongo Kundu and the Nevasha, mm -hmm. so that we can see what are the interest in, in uh, investor interest in the same. I'm, I'm happy to, to report that we got an interest of almost 460 billion uh, Kenya shilling investments which needs to flow into those two zones. Mm -hmm. But right now we are just screening them to see how the, how land can be allocated vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the amount of investments to be put in there. Okay, maybe we can land this a little bit. Yep. What kind of investments are we talking about? Mm -hmm. And how would Kenya, at the end of the day, one would think or assume that Kenya would then be on the on the beneficiary end when it came to this um what kind of projects are we talking about what kind of investors and what kind of things are they coming into the country or then even if they're domiciled here what are they doing what kind of business are we looking at ordinarily it's all investments yeah because we are investor centric but as a country we need to funnel and channel investment into our priority areas mm. so we have priority value chain which the president has pronounced himself and those are the areas which we are trying to channel investment we believe they are very impactful to the to the kenyan economy it will they are very labor intensive it will create a lot of jobs mm. and it will meet it will have the impact of creating job reducing cost of living having the building up of our foreign exchange reserves, mm -hmm. all those parameters which are in, in our Kenya Kwanzaa manifestos. Please just explain the difference between special economic zone mm -hmm. and export processing zone. Three major differences, but two are the 
three different but two are really major mm. one is on market access okay if you operate on a special economic zone you can export 100% mm. and also sell to the local economy 100% okay okay if you so everything that you produce within a special economic zone yes you can decide to sell everything locally yes and nothing locks you yes or you Subject can decide to, to taxes, yeah. export yeah. 100% and nothing locks you yes okay but if you operate in an extra processing zone mm -hmm. you can export 100% but local only 20% ah uh, okay so it's a market access issue mm -hmm. in terms of incentives in terms of incentives there's a, another difference in mm -hmm. terms of fiscal incentives yeah mm -hmm. not non fiscal non fiscal mm -hmm. is same fiscal is like you you operate in uh, EPZ, mm -hmm. the first uh, 10 years, for example, on a graduated is zero tax on corporate tax, mm -hmm. but in the SEZ is 10%. 10% mm -hmm. for the first 10 years. You pay 10% yeah, for the tax. first 10 years. Mm -hmm. If you are in an EPZ, zero. you don't pay any yes. for 10 years. But is there a guarantee that you will stay on for another 10 years? Or can somebody come in and set up in the EPZ, mm -hmm. operate tax free? But the ninth year they close, they move to another EPZ. That's a risk. That's a risk. That but uh, that we, be, we believe that that can be managed because it's about business. You cannot have business which is growing and then closing it down. Go, I, I, But that's a risk. Mm. You can do that and, and, and close, close yeah. down after 10 years. Okay. Apart from EPZ in Asa River, yes. do we have any other EPZ in this country? Yeah, we have like, uh, like almost 80 EPZ, both private and public. The Asa River one is public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Earth River is public. We have another EPZ at, uh, at Kenani, just to specialize on the leather value chain. Yeah. Yeah, we have, I think we have another one in, in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are around five public EPZ. And we've gazetted more EPZ. Just the president, uh, uh, you remember he was mentioning about Uwasingishu. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, Sag uh, Busia. Yes, Sagana. We have gazetted more EPZs. Mm -hmm. What, what goes chain. through, what, what, what happens? How do you identify an area and you decide that this one we are going to designate it as an EPZ mm -hmm. and gazette it as an EPZ? What, what's, what precedes this? Okay, first, uh, uh, one of our pillars of our economic growth is, is industrial growth. And, and for us to grow uh, industrially, we need to build or grow our industrial base. And for us to grow our industrial base, we need to increase our industrial spaces. So, and the industrial spaces are limited in Kenya. The problem people, investors are coming and they're saying they don't have land. And if you get land, there's some community resistance, either due through uh, low sensitization or political interference. Mm -hmm. So they need industrial spaces which the government is in control, which is infrastructurally enabled. And it is a, 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 a geographical place designated as such. Mm. And, and, and the, and the and the fiscal and non-fiscal around it, so that you can cluster industry together, uh, so that they can uh, benefit from the economics of agglomeration to reduce the cost of business. Mm -hmm. what yeah. would you, what's the face yeah. of these zones in the country? And I'm asking this in relation to what Kenya then is reaping. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you invest in something to be yes. able to reach or reap some kind of benefit yes. that then contributes to the... Uh, uh, money yes. that the country will, will yeah. make mm. very simply yes. right mm -hmm. so what does it look like today if we look at the money that comes into the country today what are these zones or what are these investment portfolios actually contributing currently that we can say okay these are the number of <coughs> dollars and cents or shillings and cents that are actually coming in as a result of these zones for for example there is a, there is one value chain which is the gateway to to manufacturing in kenya mm -hmm. which is the textile and apparel value chain yes and you can see at the river most of the industrial investment which has been attracted there is in the textile so that 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 uh, that kind of industrial investment first it meets one of our of of our impact of job creation it's very labor intensive mm -hmm. to if you operate in an epz it's for export so it also gives us the foreign the foreign whatever the foreign exit mm -hmm. yeah so uh, those are the kind of value chains which we believe that they will attract the industrial investment to make sure the, the jobs are created there is income 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 uh, the revenue the government will raise revenue out mm -hmm. of those and we'll also get the forex 
by, by exportation. But are we able to track as of today yes, what it's contributing? And is yes. it something significant that we can say, well, if we didn't have them, mm. there would be a dip in terms of what Kenya makes? Yes, we, can. we are tracking them. We are tracking them. In fact, as a state, our state department, we have a target. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 you just talk, we just talked about the mandate, yeah? But let, allow me to, to, to go deep into it. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about the structure, our aim, and our target, and our strategy, and how we can, we can achieve the same. So our aim, basically, is to position uh, uh, our country as, as, an, as a preferred investment destination mm -hmm. in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we have a target. We've been given a target of 10 billion mm -hmm. US dollar FDI. Mm -hmm. Okay? FDI. But we are not saying 10 right billion now. USD yes. foreign direct investment yes. Yes. coming into the country. Yes. Yes. Within how long? In fact, the target we've been given is within a year. Uh, from when? From the day the State Department was created, January. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, January 2023. Uh, okay. okay. Ten million dollars. Ten billion. B. Ten billion dollars. Yes. Mm. All right. So now we're eight months into the thing. Mm. How much has actually then been collected of that ten billion dollars? First, we, we need to understand that the trend. First, let me sh talk to you about the trend. Yes. The highest ever FDI which came to Kenya is in 2011, which was 2.1 billion US dollars. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. That it was just immediately for the constitution. Mm. From one source? No, from or different across sources. Mm. Okay. Cumulatively. Cumulatively is mm. 2 billion US dollars. And uh, before handshake, there was uh, uh, one, 1 billion US dollars in 20, 2017, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then after that, it has just been dwindling. The latest is, is around approximately 500 million US mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying, we have put uh, strategies in place to ensure that this target is aspirational, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we believe it's a challenge that we're willing to take and we're not willing to postpone, and we believe we'll reach it, we'll, we'll, we'll attain it. Eh? Mm -hmm. But come what may, we'll be able this year, God willing, with the support of the president, that we'll be able to, break, to, have a, to reach a target that is, well, as we are breaking the record, of the 2011. We will we'll go beyond the 2.1 billion, 2 billion by the end of this year. By the end of this year. In terms of investment yeah. coming into the country. Yeah. Because if you look like uh, Moderna is already a 500 million US dollar. Uh -huh. The one which was signed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is, there is, uh, there is uh, an investment which is uh, what was done in Kisumu by United Green. Mm -hmm. It's a 250 million US dollar. In Dongo Kundu, we had uh, we had an investment of Taifa gas, almost two hundred and fifty million US dollars. That is already one billion. That's already a billion. And we are aggregating all those investment coming in. We are confident that we will break the record. By but saying our target is ten billion. We are realizing investment at the point of announcement, or is it at the point of actual investment? At for example, Moderna. Yeah, yes, we have signed it and there will be groundbreaking. Next there's 500 million shillings, but it hasn't come in yet. But it will be, there will be groundbreaking next month. Possibly. So it's it's a declaration of intent. No, no, it's that's, not an intent. That's when you clock it. When as you have an agreement, it's not an intent. That means you will do it. It's when to start. Intent is intending to invest. Mm. You have agreed we are investing, you have signed the agreement, mm -hmm. is to start. Okay. Yeah, and they will groundbreak, I think, next uh, Next month, mm. possibly. Taifa gas has broken ground. Yes, they have broken ground. They're already going on. Yes. So uh, at, we can say at least a bit of that 200 million shillings. It's, it's flowing. It's already flowing in. Yes. Moderna, not yet. Yes, it will start next month. The Kisumu one, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So when you come to present your report at the end of the year and mm. you tell us you've already achieved 1.5 billion shillings, mm -hmm. it will not be because it's in on the ground. It will be because are, contracts have been signed. Notable investment agreement which you have signed eh? mm -hmm. but there are many and we will give you the the, mm -hmm. the ministry of will give the, the the report okay you were giving us the other targets and, and and also you told us that your main aim is to position kenya as a preferred investment yes. destination yes uh, in africa yes your target 10 billion dollars fdi yes year on year yes any other target target is FDI. This is it. The meaty targets are three targets. One is FDI mm -hmm. for, to convert it from 500 million US dollars mm -hmm. to 10 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. The level of, of manufacturing as a percentage of GDP from 7% to 15% mm -hmm. by and export as, of, as a percentage of GDP from 10 to 30. Mm -hmm. Those are the three meaty targets. Mm -hmm. Can I look at this third one of exports from 10 to 30%? So we're looking at exports um, and those are of um, 
materials that have been manufactured in Kenya. Yes. All right. So that's fantastic yeah. because what it does is that it raises the manufacturing profile. Mm. It, it, it is a good thing that yeah. it can actually then be seen to say Kenya now gets from the level where it's not manufacturing to, you know, we, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say it not manufacturing because we had a conversation last week yes. about power, right? And the we're saying that we're only power. using a certain amount of power compared to South Africa because we can see huge in terms of the industries that are moving in South Africa and they're doing that because they're manufacturing in country, mm. right? So we'll see that from what you're saying yes. that the manufacturing profile then will be raised quite significantly yes. and then the exports the hope is that by 2027 mm. that 30 percent will that would have increased to 30 percent mm -hmm. from the current 10 percent yes what by is 2025. by 2025 then by 2027 our gdp of manufacturing from 7 to 15 to 15 percent so my question is here what is being done that is going to that informs this this 20% increase of exports because it will play directly on manufacturing. It doesn't matter what you do. In order to export, you must manufacture locally. Mm -hmm. So that, we don't even have to mention that. But what happens to say that this number is will increasing. be realized or that is increasing? Okay. So that, that is, I, I told you that that's a, Every target is for each state department. It's so that is state department for state. This is Dr. For, for trade, mm. No, yeah. for Kombudo. However, Kombudo, how I, Kombudo, I, yeah. I, my role in, in, in that this, yes. is that we have tools for attracting industrial investment yeah. which are export oriented. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is EPZ. Because we so, all touch on each other in yes, one way or yes, another. Yes. So we if are you, gazetting EPZ, we are mm -hmm. attracting investment that are export oriented. So, so they will increase that, that percentage. So I see a handhold in here. Yes. If you're bringing in FDI yes. as this state department mm. this money then essentially will go i mean simplifying it really mm. but it goes directly to these other two whereby folks are manufacturing Correct. on this end we're exporting on the other Correct. side and that now shows that this money that you've brought in then is actually playing going out bringing more money yes. back in Correct. Correct. so do you play kind of like um tag with your other departments where you're saying come on guys mm. you need to also be moving because i can mm. see fdi coming in yeah. and if it's not being implemented or mm -hmm. being used mm. then we have a problem correct mm. we work on a collaborative approach I, on our, our approach to, to to doing things is on a value chain approach mm. from from a product level and also for 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 the state department we work together on how this thing is from the production to 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 value addition to market Okay. Yeah, and all the investment opportunities and the business reform issues, business, business, I mean, ease of doing business in that value chain we are able to identify and able to ease it if it's, it's onerous. What do you see as a problem mm -hmm. towards having these, number one, goals attained and number two, implementation of some of these things that you've spoken about? What do you see as the challenges today? Okay. One one of the challenge of 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 FDI, for example, has been the has been the social negative social sentiment on 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 uh, economic dominance by by, by FDI mm -hmm. in, in certain economic sectors. You you've heard about the China Square, mm -hmm. yeah. So people tend to think that we are they come and do everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the solution there we are trying to do is to make sure we are we are promoting linkage between FDI and the DDI, so that the, when the FDI flows, they integrate with DDI through through if, uh, linkages and local sourcing, so they can feel part of that that uh, global value chain. And and two, we we are coming up with something called uh, an, a negative list or a restricted list of what FDI can do. Yeah, uh, there are certain sectors of the economy that FDI cannot touch, mm. maybe because of its sensitivity, or maybe restricted to our small, small DDI. Mm. So that is what we are doing. There are certain sectors where they can move freely, certain sectors where we can move jointly together, and certain sectors you cannot touch. That is how we are trying to. to what determines that? Yeah. This because is, if, you look at, if you look at retail, so you can come and say that you cannot come and be a hawker, mm. but you can come and set up a retail shop. So, no, no, we, 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 we want them to, to stick to manufacturing mm -hmm. so that the retail can be done by. But that's a policy issue. Okay. So it's, it's right now with, uh, with Kipra mm. uh, so that they can validate it in, some, in terms of evidence. Mm. Then it will go through public participation and then it will go all the way to the cabinets to be approved.
Okay. Yeah. Time for that break at half past eight. We're having a conversation with Abu Bakr Hassan Abu Bakr. He is the principal secretary in the State Department for Investment Promotion from the Ministry of MITI. The MITI is Investment Promotion, Investment, Trade and Industry. 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 That's what the ministry is all about. We're talking about attracting investment into the country and within the country. That's what he's calling FDI and DDI. And the DDI here is Domestic, domestic Direct Investment. investment. Yeah. Keep it here. The conversation continues shortly. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> Having come from Bakikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice hmm. <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people, and we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell uh, Honor Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is doing conmanship. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And the situation, bro. Kenya's biggest conversation. Right, conditions are 15 in Nairobi, highs of 21 and lows of 13. We'll see lows of 13 in Nakuru, where it's sunny at 17. Cloudy at 14 in Nyeri and lows of just that. 15 are sunny in Eldoret with lows of 11. It's sunny at 25 in Mombasa, lows of 23. And we'll see lows of 24 in a sunny Malindi at 25. It's 21 and mostly sunny in Kisumu, lows of 18. 20 and mostly sunny in Kakamega with lows of 16. Kampala is cloudy at 20, lows of 17, and we'll see lows of 22 in a sunny Dar es Salaam at, 22, at 26. 8 degrees and sunny in Johannesburg, it'll be just that low. And 25 and cloudy in Lagos. It's 23 and sunny in Kinshasa, it'll go to highs of 31. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. That Pangani underpass is what is going to cause the most uncomfortability this morning. As you're getting out into the CBD, also coming in from Kiambu Road, we'll see that movement there. Uhuru Highway, when you're looking at it coming from the Nyayo Stadium roundabout all the way through towards your Haile Selassie Junction, then into the city, touching on Chiromo, where there's traffic coming off Chiromo right about now. And we're also looking at James Gishoro, really busy. What's this? This is Ngong Road, touching on Naivasha Road, Gitanga Road, that whole area as you go out towards Mzima Springs and then James Gishoro. Very, very busy right about now. And we'll see many things happening during traffic hour this morning as movement continues through and through. Let's talk on Spice FM KE on X. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Investment promotion. Abu Bakar Hassan Abu Bakar, talking about in attracting investments into this country, special economic zones, export pro processing zones, county aggregation in industrial parks. industrial parks and then we have all the bodies that are under this can invest that's supposed to be attracting investment yeah i want to talk about the epz for a bit okay because they've been here for a while and we've known them we know they are the river epz the mombasa epz mm. but that's just about it mm -hmm. the ones that are known and we know that when you talk about those two EPZs, you'll focus a lot on textile and apparel. Yes. And you'll talk about export. Yes. So the companies that have come, they've set up at the EPZ. They are employing our people to go and they're just seamstresses and tailors producing uh, high quality stuff. 
EPZs, you can sell a, about local 20% mm. of what is happening at the EPZ can be sold locally. Do we see any of that? No, we don't. Not much. Well, I know you'll tell me that I saw there was a time when you had a KICC whole uh, Maasai market of EPZ products. <laughs> but that's about it. How much of what comes out of EPZ actually gets into the Kenyan market, number one. And number two, a lot of EPZ has been focusing on exporting to the USA under the AGOA initiative. And then we'll review as AGOA is coming to, a, to an end next year. And you see, we've barely even scratched the surface on what AGOA was giving us as an opportunity to access the American market. What has this, what have this EPZ been doing? What has the EPZ authority been doing all these years? In terms of AGOA or... In no, terms in terms of just promoting uh, EPZs uh, and I making think it is in, EPZs it's the work. legal mandate mm. of EPZ. It's in the law. All, all, the, all the institutions under me are, they have a mandate of promoting investment. Kenya Invest says a special economic zone and EPZ. And they have been doing that. And that is where you are seeing this level of, of, of exports out there. You know, in our forex stock, the highest uh, forex is from exports. Is, is six billion US dollar. Mm. The second forex uh, stock is uh, remittance, right? Uh, right now we are doing at four billion US dollar. Mm. The third one is on tourism, mm. and the fourth one is FDI. That's the last. Mm. It's a, a less than five hundred million US dollar. So you can see, but we are trying. We are, t but we need to work hard and make it better. Yeah, and and the problem has been that most of our exports we are exporting them raw. For example, our tea and coffee, mm. Mm. And, and, and the president has given us a challenge that they should be uh, exported, processed, or value added. Yeah. Mm. So I think EPZ is doing its its level best to to, but they need they can do better. Not level best, but yeah. PS and let, allow me to demonstrate. Yeah, demonstrate. Apart from okay, so the Athriva EPZ has several textile and apparel ones. Yes. I know there's an abattoir. Yes. And there are several others. Yes. Why haven't you been seeing Export Pro Processing Zone Authority promoting f factories setting up there to process for export? We talk about exporting our raw materials. Why aren't we seeing more EPZs apart from these two that I've mentioned that everybody knows about? So we've all these other EPZs. We that have just gazetted three more. I see. <laughs> now. Because this is a new administration. Yeah? What has this EPZ authority been doing all these years? The, the mandate has not changed, has it? Uh huh. But you, I, I ask question for this administration. You, I answer question for this administration. Are you so able to far, tell we have gazetted doing this? more EPZ, mm -hmm. and we are going out there to make them more visible and uh, and uh, to create awareness on what is EPZ all about. Mm. What yeah? is the plan? Yes. For in terms of what Kenyans then will be able to see, what the country will be able to see, mm -hmm. that's on one side. And then even as we're going into looking at what the investment portfolio will look like for the country, mm. why is there a heavy insistence on looking at an external source for um, investment? On the FDI? Yes. So first is the, the, the breakdown on the Forex. Mm. Oh, yeah, you can see FDI is the lowest. Yeah? Mm. But if you, if, if you look at our private investment, if you look at the trends of private investment, FDI contributes to less than 1% to our GDP. Yeah, a lot of private investment is, is domestic. Mm. So we need to reverse that trend. Because once we, we attract FDI, we are going to tick the box on the Forex. Yeah, this FDI will come create jobs. You are create, we are taking the box of creating jobs. This FDI will come and, you know, if they set up business, we'll get revenue from the, for, for, for government. You're, you're going to take that. And it depends on where they're investing. If they're investing, for example, in the edible oil processing and all that, it's going to reduce the cost of, cost of, cost of living. So we believe that FDI ticks most of the boxes in terms of the impact we have uh, to the Kenyans, mm. we intend to have for the Kenyans. There's been argument that when a government focuses so much on attracting FDI, yes. it's giving so many incentives yes. to a private investor from another country to come and invest in the country mm. and forgetting the local investor who's been struggling and laboring and paying all the taxes, mm -hmm. right? So you are incentivizing somebody else to come and invest, mm -hmm. and yet you're forgetting this goose that has been laying the golden egg all along mm -hmm. locally. Oh. First of all, we are not forgetting. Mm -hmm. I've said we, we, our, 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 our program is to integrate mm -hmm. through linkages and local sourcing. Two, the zones are open even for domestic uh, investors. They are not open only for, F, for foreign investors. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So we, we, we are not forgetting them, uh, them at all. But we want to put Kenya into the map, into the international map. We need to be globally competitive. Mm -hmm. So the more we attract the FTI, the, the more we are seeing that we are more globally competitive and the investors will start flowing. You know, this FDA market is, for 2021 uh, statistics, it's a 1.6 trillion market. Yeah. Out of the 1.6 trillion market where FDI flow, 81 billion came to Africa. 81 billion US dollar came mm. to Africa. Out of that, eight only 8 billion came to East Africa. Out of the 8 billion which came into Africa, Kenya got less than 500 million. Half of it went to Ethiopia and other uh, neighboring countries. Mm. So that means uh, with the perception out there is that we are not globally competitive. competitive. Mm. So that is something which we need to reverse. What is that? Because that's a big thing. Yes. Why is it that a lot of that FDI would go into Ethiopia, into other countries within the East Africa, mm -hmm. and only 500 million would come to Kenya. What weren't we doing right? Because it can't the, be we're not pos positioning ourselves. We are, we are, we, that's why we are strengthening our competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And also it's all about investor confidence. And that is what the president is doing now. Is our pro promoter, investment promoter number one. Mm -hmm. And when we are using we are using him, we are using the, the embassies out our embassies out there to promote uh, to promote Kenya. Mm. Uh, we, you can see we even the, the ambassadors who are working, yeah. who are posted in Kenya. You can see we the Meg White man what he's doing for for this country. So that is what we are trying to do to position our country no. and also strengthen our our competitive uh, advantage. Let me mention a couple of things, Pierre, yes. and you tell me whether they are correct. Yes, in terms of impediments to foreign direct investment in the country. Uh -huh. Number one, cost mm -hmm. of power. Great. Mm -hmm. Number two, corruption. Mm -hmm. For you to get this land, you have to cough something. For you to get a license, you've got to cough something. And the entire just, we call ourselves, you know, ranking highly in the ease of doing business. Mm. But if we took a ground, mm. the different. Mm -hmm. Which any of those two be correct? Okay. The, and that is what the president has put. I mean, the problem was weak coordination. Yeah of this this investment opportunities everyone is doing their own own thing they need to be coordinated uh, and that is why this state department was created yeah it was created to coordinate that so no more brokers no more corruption if you have a problem you come to my state department mm -hmm. you'll be facilitated and coordinated all the, across the government uh, state department for free you don't have to pay anything <coughs> these are the measures so we are putting in place anybody wanting to set up shop in this country yes comes through your state department mm -hmm. and they get all the licenses everything okay the, our our investment facility our investment facilitation strategy is mm. three is threefold one is structured in three ways you have to go to k invest and we are changing the law to make sure it will be mandatory for fdi to be registered mm -hmm. at, at k invest mm -hmm. so that is the first part of call we are making it to be from we are changing it from people calling it one stop shop to a one start and one stop center mm. you start there and you end there you don't have to parachute yourself to state house parachute yourself to, to me you end there and you're strengthening can you invest to do that mm. however if they turn out not to be facilitated and they frustrate you then you can appeal the, an appeal mechanism to the state department if you think you are, the investor is not still not satisfied mm. there's an appeal mechanism to the minister of investment mm. and the president has a also operationalize national investment council chaired by himself mm. it's it's about uh, the, its job is to remove impediment creation of incentives and listening to these problems yeah so it the last part of or the last resort will be the at an organ chaired by the president himself mm -hmm. so you can see how it is structured from can you invest with an appeal mechanism to the state department and the ministry to the national investment council chaired by the president is this what was not working before yes i think so because uh what uh, once this administration came in the first thing uh, the president established this state department he has operationalized the national investment council now we are strengthening the kenya invest we want to anchor the one start one stop into the law mm. so that we give them power to coordinate amongst the other government agencies and all fdi must be registered there for us to effectively facilitate you we must know you first yeah we need to give you proper aftercare mm. but if with you still believe that mm. there's a problem then there's an appeal mechanism to the state department to the minister and to the president himself the habit of how money comes into kenya historically yes. has been 
a habit of secrecy in that nobody really knows how much has come in nobody really knows how much has been spent you look at the books later and then maybe there's a budget etc here with fdi yeah. essentially what you're looking at is huge amounts of money for the purpose of investment in the country and then going towards manufacturing and then export later yes will there be traceability elements here to be able to say look this is what came in this is what it was used for this is what we've realized at the end of the day and will that information then be av made available to anybody who looks for it yeah yeah yeah. of course uh, it's all about data driven and that is the reason why we want them to register with canvas not only for us to give them uh proper aftercare but also for us to get us data for macroeconomic planning and policy mm. policy decision from there we can be able will be the main and the credible source of fdi how it has come in and how it has been uh, utilized into the into this country mm. and that is why we want them to register we are reviewing our law and that one will be there how long what's the target how long should somebody who wishes to come and invest in the country how long before they actually can get everything sorted mm -hmm. and ready to start it, it depends if they are they are they have everything if yep. they have everything they are ready and, and it they depends. want they are coming making the first inquiry to can invest mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and they're ready to go with everything flow you asking for this documentation i'm gonna give it to you i'm gonna give you i, I need to pay for this license i'm ready to pay how long i don't think it will take more than a month it will not take even the if you want to register business it will be one day two three days so long as you you meet all the requirements after registering the business mm. it's about the utilities right mm. you we we have in the, in a one stop in the one start one stop we have all the utility provider put in one place then after that is about the licenses the approvals yeah? mm. we're having all the approval entities to to be put in one place mm. and we want them we are telling them to also delegate the powers to the people sitting in in the one start one stop center mm. because if you go there and then someone says it has to go back to kra or it has to go back to nema still the process will take some time yeah. so they delegate the power it will be approved there so not more than a, one month what's the coordination of the counties because these businesses will be set up in counties Correct. and we have seen investors complaining so they get licenses at the national level Correct. when they go to the counties Correct then they get another run around mm -hmm. and that is why right now we, we we are working closely together with the council of governance and you can see during the devolution conference we are also working we have a collaborative agreement with the economic blocks to make sure those problems are, are resolved mm. yes issue of confidence and yes. i've got to throw this one out there yes the person who one of the people who is now advising the president yes. on this whole structure of of you know in the economy on industrialization mm. is somebody who served in the cabinet secretary for this department and others that are around trade yes. for 10 years mm. if those things didn't happen when he was in charge mm. he's now advising the president on how these things will happen when he's not mm -hmm. you want me to answer that yeah how do we get a confidence how do you assure us of confidence at this but, time but, we don't expect you know Bubaka to be the one who's now uh, but, but the president is advised by an economic team not by one person there's an economic team that chaired by uh the able mr d mm. so uh, it's, it's not one person eh? anything he says it will be vetted by others and mm -hmm. it will be something which is really tangible for the president to act on mm. let's talk about kipes the county aggregation and industrial parks yes what are those okay kipes means county aggregation and industrial parks and it is it is as a designated place geographically designated place which is infrastructurally enabled so that for investors to come and plug and play but for a certain purposes the problems we are having with our farmers yeah one is when they produce there's a lot of post harvest losses right yeah. because either they do not have storage or they do not have uh, coal, you know, storage things. Mm. And then they sell their, their products at, at a distressed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Two, uh, well, the farmers, they do not know whom to sell to. So they are like, we are not producing. Mm. And you, you, the president is very clear, we need to be a productive country. Not a, and that is why we are subsidizing production, mm. not, not consumption. So what do we do? How do we make uh, farmers produce more? and uh, you tell them if your problem is post harvest losses then they, there is a place here where you can aggregate your 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 produce mm. uh, you can store them if they we will put cold storage there if it's fish and those things which are perishable mm -hmm. and we can store them 
so that you don't have to sell at this place. Mm. Two, we'll get uh, off takers to come and uh, once once people know that there, there's a central place where you can you can uh, supply you you can get your goods, mm. they will come there and, and off take. So we are helping farmers to produce more, right? However, once once it is aggregated there, we uh, the president is very clear: we should not be selling our products raw. Mm. We should value add and process. Mm. So so the Akai will solve both problems of aggregating mm -hmm. to help the farmers in terms of uh, po managing the post-harvest loss, mm -hmm. but also once those products have been aggregated, now they can be processed, value-added, and industrialized. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that one we will create, and that is economic trans. we will create more jobs now at the industrialization, the value addition, and the processing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> However, there's a third one. Once once we have, they have been aggregated there, we, there's something called... Uh, Commodities exchange. Yeah. Once, once they are aggregated there, the, uh, the farmers will get will be getting a, a warehouse receipt mm. where they can use that to access credit, and those products can be able to 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 be traded at the commodity exchange. So the farmers, when, while they are storing there, they can actually see the price of their product. So nobody can tell them, "Oh, this pr this price has been depressed." They can see it at, at the market. Okay. Is it forty seven types? Yes. So caps. each county will have one yes. aggregation industrial park. Yes, based on their competitive and comparative advantage. Which means that the farmers have to be very well organized. Correct. So that produce at harvest is all picked. It's aggregated at farm level. Yes. At village level. Yes. And then it goes into maybe sub-county to come to correct, the county. Correct, correct. So, have you done that back? Yes, yes. There's uh, with uh, with in collaboration with the State Department of SME. Mm. We there will be a collection center at the at the ward level and at the constituency level to feed into the aggregation center at the county level. Mm. Who the owns farmers, this? State Department of SME. Okay. The collection center. What falls under the industry is the kipe. Then there is the issue of the farmers needs to be to be put to be mainstream and formalized into a cooperative. There's a state department of cooperative. We are working as a whole government together okay. to address this problem. I, I hear what you're saying in terms of how then this government comes in and then now says this is where we are and this is where we ought to be going. Mm. And I'm going to focus on the kipes a little bit yes. and ask the question, does it come from an informative point of view where you look across the counties and you say, look, this is your strength. This is something that you have that we can actually manufacture or something you grow mm -hmm. that we can actually then turn into in uh, mm -hmm. export, mm -hmm. which then could feed into your FDI. It could yes. feed into so many things. Mm -hmm. But then the state, the current state of things, how is that being worked on? I'll take a county like Kilifi, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. whereby uh, the industry there one could very easily say would be something like cashew nuts mm. but the industry is on its knees today today mm. as we speak mm. the workers poor state of things in terms of machinery doesn't exist mm. um often broken down or then worker care for you know the processing of the nuts and things like that in a very poor state of affairs mm -hmm. but it could be yielding huge in terms of profits for the county and also on a larger scale for the country and I'm sure we will find as we go from county to county different things that are not in the state in which they ought to be. Mm -hmm. And yet we are depending on them to bring in this much needed revenue. Mm -hmm. What would be the mitigation efforts on the in 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 the interim to mm -hmm. make sure that we get to where we are going? Because if Kilifi naturally produces cashew yes. and you can say we can depend on this, mm -hmm. it's it's dead in the water because mm -hmm. nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If there's a tannery in another county and mm -hmm. it can actually produce world class leather yeah. and there's a problem with this equipment and mm -hmm. the care of its workers, we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So, what would be the mitigation measures in the interim to make sure that it's actually up to the level where we say, fantastic, ease of doing business, check, conducive environment, check, let's go? I think what, what we're doing currently with the counties are three things to make sure these, these Skypes will be operational, they will be functional, and they will be impactful. One is we are working together with counties to identify those value chain if it's cash or not. And those value chain must be bankable value chains, mm -hmm. right? Two, we are looking at the market for this value chain, both domestically and, 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 and internationally for this value chain. And thirdly, we are working with the counties on the business environment around 
in that county so that now when when an investor comes to plug and play in the in the kype infrastructure he knows where to get the to get the, the raw materials the business environment is very conducive and he knows where to to sell those so that is what we are working together and we are coming up we are soon developing an an a kype investment promotion strategy where we are starting to promote kipes as a priority mm. because we don't want those kipes to be fully developed uh, or constructed in one year and there are no investors there. Mm. So we have a strategy in place, we are starting to promote those kipes based on those three fundamental parameters which attract, attract investments. There's concern, P.S., yes. that um, backwards at the farm level not enough attention is being put here mm. in terms of creating awareness. Mm -hmm. And I know we have talked about value chains. So yeah. let's say uh, Nakuru there's a value chain for cotton. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if Nakuru focuses on the cotton value chain, yes. then the cotton and pyrethrum, mm -hmm. cotton and pyrethrum farmers, pyrethrum farmers would have to first of all be organized. They had stopped farming pyrethrum. Yes. Get them on board. I know uh, organizations such as Kentegra are working mm -hmm. in Nakuru County mm -hmm. to get the farmers, sensitize them, mm -hmm. or now let's get back into pyrethrum farming. Mm -hmm. But then, in terms of cooperatives and organizing them, mm -hmm. Is enough sufficient effort being put now mm -hmm. to start organizing farmer, farmer cooperatives so they can have their structures in place? Mm -hmm. So as the kipe is being developed yes. in Nakuru County mm -hmm. and you're looking for investors to come and establish the storage yes. and the, uh, the value off addition and the offtake and the value addition, yes. then the farmer will also be ready at that point. I, I think that the is concern I've heard yeah. is that there's a lot of focus and attention on this big ticket investment items mm. of the kipes and the building the kipes mm. but not on organizing the farmers so you think they are not being uh, it's uh, not happening simultaneously okay i, I think it's happening mm. and uh, and i uh, will get an opportunity to call the ps the department of cooperative but we are working together as a team and it's working maybe it, maybe it's just about being felt or but it's, we are working as a team and it's being done. Mm. Yeah, the, the products are being aggregated. The farmers are being put together to the, to, 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 uh, through cooperatives. And we are trying at our, in the, at our level to cluster industry into, into the kipes. Okay. Yes. If you look at, say, a county, and the county has more than one value chain, what kind of division of focus are you giving it? Okay, if it has you'll more than find, one value chain. You'll yes. find many counties that have, for example, yes, they could have pyrethrum and dairy. Mm, they yeah. could have cotton and dairy. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have uh, cashew nut mm. and probably dairy mm -hmm. and leather. Yes. So how do you split the so attention? Uh, our, our philosophy, we are, we are investor-centric. Yeah. So we'll go with the investors' needs. So if, if and we have, we'll talk to the counties, and that is why we are talking to economic blocks. If... Uh, an investment will make sense that uh, you focus i will focus on cotton yeah so that other counties can be can bring their their cotton, produce yeah. mm -hmm. to be aggregated in, a, in another county then so be it will work together to make sure for the economy of scale Ra rather than an investor coming and getting small 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 uh, produce mm -hmm. and then another investor in another county getting some and they they cannot make uh, the, the business will not scale. be commercial they will mm -hmm. not be commercially viable Okay. Yes. As you conclude, what yes. 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 What are your targets within the next one year? The ten billion US dollar. That's uh, it. <laughs> That's it. This and my is strategy is three pronged. One, investment attraction. And the investment attraction we have three sub sub strategies. One, we are enhancing, improving our investment climate and business environment. Two we are building investment grade opportunities. We have opportunities, but they are not investment grade. We need to make them bankable opportunities mm -hmm. for the investors to, to, to uh, for investment to flow. Mm -hmm. And three is aggressive marketing or campaign of both the climate, because the people do not take advantage, they take advantage of an opportunity, not the climate. Mm -hmm. So we are, campaign we are uh, campaigning of both the climate and the investment grade opportunity. That is our under our investment attraction strategy. Mm. Once someone is attracted, it needs to be facilitated. We have uh, a facilitation strategy. One is the first one start, one stop at Kenyon Invest mm. with an appeal mechanism to the State Department, the Ministry, and to the National Investment Council, chaired by the President. Mm. You will be adequately facilitated. Mm. Three, you need to be enabled. We know that our country is, is has financial is robust in the financial sector and it has deep capital markets. But in addition, we have a program for co-investing 
with with uh, with with investors through our Kenya Development Bank mm -hmm. and uh, uh, export processing zone and special economic zone to enable the investment to flow. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us. We use those to hold you to account. Thank you. Abubakar Hassan Abubakar is the principal secretary in the State Department for Investment Promotions. In the next hour, we talk about Kiambu County politics. Why do they want to impeach their governor? Good morning, 9 a.m. Good morning, this is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Founders of the controversial cryptocurrency project WorldCoin are expected in the country next week. They are set to face a parliamentary committee inquiring into its activities in Kenya following its suspension earlier this month. The committee began its inquiry with representatives from the multi-agency National Computer and Cyber Crime Coordination Committee, NC4, being the first to testify. In its submission, NC4 said, Thousands of Kenyans who scanned their eyeballs in exchange for 7,000 shillings may not have received the money, stating that those who registered were only given free tokens, which were to be later cashed out by those with PayPal accounts. As of July 2023, Kenya had the highest number of subscribers at 350,000, accounting for 25% of the global figure. On its website, World ID signups have so far hit 2.26 million from 34 countries, open ICO some Altman developed the project alongside Max Novenston and Alex Blenia. Kenya, which is one of the first countries where Wildcoin was launched, suspended its enrollment, citing security, privacy, and financial concerns. An estimated 30,000 delegates are expected to attend the forthcoming Africa Climate Summit. A Tuesday Covenant meeting noted that the summit, which will be held from September 4th to 6th, has attracted immense global interest. President William Ruto chaired the meeting at Kagamega State Lodge. The Africa Climate Summit will be organized in parallel with this year's Africa Climate Week from September 4th to 8th. And three people died in a road accident along the busy Kisumu Busia Road after an accident involving three vehicles. The accident involved a passenger vehicle and two other small cars, leaving several people with serious injuries. A driver who witnessed the accident that happened at a black spot in the Ojola area in the outskirts of Kisumu City said the accident was caused by a vehicle that was overtaking. Godfrey Oboba says there was a traffic snarl up when a small car overlapped, causing the accident. Now, as Mira Moja, one Kenya light senators have condemned President William Ruto's remarks in Bungoma concerning cartels frustrating the sugar industry, where business investor Jaswatan Rai was adversely mentioned. Led by Senate Minority Leader Stewart Mazayu, they castigated the remarks, saying it amounted to callous threats aimed at clawing back the gains made in the constitution. Mazayu was flanked by Kitui Senator Enokwambua and his Migori counterpart, Adi Okech, claimed that Rai was being threatened due to his political differences with the Kenya Kwanza Alliance regime. And UN Human Rights Officer said fighting between Ethiopia's military and militiamen in the Amhara region has killed at least 183 people. More than a thousand people have been arrested nationwide, many of them reported to be young people of ethnic Amhara origin under a state of emergency according to the government decreed to respond to the violence. Ethiopia's government spokesperson did not respond to the request comment. And Embakasi East AMP Babo Wino has been acquitted in a case where he was charged with shooting Felix Orinda, also known as DJ Evolve, while making the ruling. However, Melibani Senior Principal Magistrate Barnard Choi said the police conducted the investigations in a shoddy way. And Zimbabwe's main opposition has called for fresh elections after its presidential candidate lost to incumbent Emerson Mnagangwa in a vote it launched as flawed and illegal. The Citizens Coalition for Change urged the African Union and Southern Africa's regional bloc to help mediate a solution to the crisis that followed last Wednesday's vote. Mnagangwa won a second time with 52.6% against 44% of the CCC's Nelson Chamisa, according to official results announced Saturday by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. International observers said the vote fell short of democratic standards. 
and china premier has warned u.s officials that moves to politicize trade issues would prove disastrous for the global economy u.s commerce secretary gina raimondo is currently on a four-day bridge building visit to china aimed at better managing tensions between the world's two largest economies but a meeting with premier Li Qiang saw the top official lay into american trade curbs against beijing which washington insists are necessary for its national security but china China says are meant to clip the economic rise. This is news I'm Dennis I'll say a good morning. Ninety four point four Spice FM Nairobi. Okay, it's a few minutes after 9 o'clock and we're looking at traffic coming into different parts of the city this morning. Uh, we still have a little bit here and there coming into the CBD from Jogo Road onto Landis out towards Kamkunji. We'll see that that opens up in a short while. It's also still heavy on the Pangani underpass coming into the city and we're looking at traffic as well. Heavy on James Gishuru as well as coming off of Chiromo. Into the CBD is where most of it is headed this morning. Let's keep an eye on things and see how that opens up. Let's talk on Spice FM KE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way Seven to start your day. The conversations continue. Thank you very much for keeping it locked. This is the Situation Room live every weekday morning. It's Eric and Ndu. CT, not around today. So the Principal Secretary in the State Department for Investment has mm -hmm. talked about the target. Mm -hmm. 10 billion USD. Dollars. <whistles> mm. What? Right. That's a tough one. It is. That's a tough one. Um, but then again, if we are realizing the target at the point of signing a deal, you know now someone can play games. Do you know what it is? Sign deals. It's pledges and M-Pesa. <laughs> M-Pesa is the one that you see in your phone. Pledges of I will bring 10 it's million. People are in a WhatsApp group and oh. they've said, Mimi, to a 10,000. We raise the money. Mm. Yeah. When? Where is it? Mimi. Mimi. Until and unless it's there. Uh, then you cannot speak of it. Gary, a bride, Gary, a bride, the mimi ni tatoa. Then on the day of the wedding, the chick is left hailing a cab. <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I think. Day to the wedding, nothing has mm. happened. What? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's see how they do. Something's happening in Gabon. Yes. Yeah, so there was an election. Yeah. All right. Yes. A uh, new president and same same president, newly elected. Newly elected president <laughs> then becomes president for another term. Mm. The army decided. Excuse me. <laughs> no. And uh, another coup. Well, no. Is that Let, let's say like this, that when the election results then had been made mm. public, then the army decided, I'm sorry, but those are not our results. And so guess what we are going to do in the meantime? You, newly elected, step aside for a moment while we take the seat of power. And that is the current situation. They this is what's decided, unfolding. In, this in is what is unfolding in Gabon as we speak. They've decided, no, it's not happening. You can announce whatever you want to announce, mm. but we have taken over. We are now in State House. And until further notice, this is where we shall remain. The man who was in the ballot is one of the bongos. Yes. He's a bongo junior. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ali Bongo, yeah. uh, son of Omar Bongo, mm. is the one. Yes, he is. So he goes through an election, he's elected. Mm. And they say, Sawa, Sawa, where is the to Tumaku elect? 64.27% of the vote, according to official results. Mm. And then, no sooner 
than he had said the 64.2 per, and we now therefore declare that you are etc et even the choir Boom. had not stopped singing at mm. bombers mm. <laughs> military comes in and says excuse me hold on hold on we have cancelled that election we have dissolved all institutions that ibc of gabon out, out. that did everybody go home. go home we military are going to tell you what we're going to do next if you needed a visual representation of let's shut everything down and go home the boys and girls in Libo is showing in you that right now. In 2023, we are seeing militaries getting emboldened. Yep. Well, it's West Africa. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that mm. this capital of Rebon is called Libreville? <laughs> Which means freedom. Free town. Free tom, freedom city. <laughs> Free city. Uh, and this has happened. Anyway, let's have a conversation now about Kiambu uh, County and what's happening there. We saw earlier this week the members of the County Assembly of Kiambu yeah. coming together and raising issues about what's happening with the County Executive of Kiambu. And they've said, you know, we need to see change. If we don't see change, very, very soon we'll kick the balls in motion. Yeah. And what are those balls? Impeachment. Impeachment. The one tool that the county assemblies know how to use very well. Mm. Above oversight, above legislation, <laughs> impeachment. impeachment. Anyway, one of those members of the county assembly representing the ward is Ruth White. She's our guest in the studio. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning. Karibu sana Asante. to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante. You've been here before. Yes, I have. We were talking about um, the issues that have bedeviled Kiambu. Mm -hmm. And you said, if Womatangi does not watch out... <laughs> If he does not, we are back. Yes. <laughs> now here you are. We are back. You are saying the same thing. <laughs> this is a new year, academic year. No, <laughs> financial year. Yes. You're saying the same thing. <laughs> hey. You'll also be joined by Patrick Garuya, who is the MCA for Tigoni Ward. He'll be joining us shortly. But Karibu Sana, we can start the conversation. <laughs> All right. That's yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me give you today's proverb. Uh, proverbs this week are from South Africa. And today's proverb is... When a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. When a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. Hmm. Interesting. On, mm. What's the interpretation <laughs> of that? <laughs> what do you think it's, mean, it's saying? Uh, when a bird builds its nest, it uses the feathers of other birds. To do what? To build its nest. Then I'll liquid it to Kiambu County. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like um, the governor built his nest and he's using us to make probably to enrich himself or something like that on our behalf. <laughs> something yeah. like that. He's misusing the, the feathers of other birds. Exactly. <laughs> to build his own giant nest exactly hey. so there was an entire media briefing by mcas yeah. first of all how many wards do we have in kembo so kembo county has 60 wards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 60 wards how many members are there in the county assembly including the nominated oh uh, the county assembly has 60 elected members mm -hmm. and 26 nominated members mm -hmm. so in this scenario we have three independent mm. candidates we have four jubilee mm -hmm. candidates we have four mm. uh to Jibebe candidates mm -hmm. and we have four chama chakazi mm -hmm. candidates so yeah that's the composition the rest are uh their uh, uda mm. Mm. the rest are all uda yes this <laughs> so this other, these are the three independent, four Jubilee, four Tujibebe, four CCM elected. CCK. CC, yes. CC, mm -hmm. CC, yes. Elected CCK. and nominated together. But uh, basically, Kiambu, mm. we were able to get 46 out of 60 mm. UDA candidates. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who, how many of you were at the press conference on Monday? Oh, the list I checked last, because normally we do a roll call, mm. you had about, the people who are supporting were around 47 who were there that day, but we got late, so some members had left, mm. some members were taking back their kids to school, we had apologies, but we decided as long as we are there, 
and uh, the message is home then so be it so 47 mcas yeah were there were mm. there but, but some were maybe some were in the chamber some some were in the committees mm. yeah mm. but that day we were 47 of us and we had 14 apologies okay yeah what's the beef mm. what's the problem <laughs> Basically, there's no beef, uh, but what from the pre from the presser that we made, uh, we were citing some few issues that we thought were not uh, being done in the right way. Uh, the last time I was here, you remember I was whining, saying mm. six months down the line, nothing has been done. Mm. Now we are talking about one year down the line. The same, same issues, nothing has been done. I mean, nothing. What is nothing? Okay, in nothing I mean in terms of development. Mm. Like, uh, for example, I'll give you a very simple scenario. Like now, uh, governor launched a, uh, the feeding program for our ECD uh, students. Mm. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, on Monday, there was, not, there was not such a program. Up to today, our kids, there's no, Aluazma, three, Maya Itatu, na Ujimoto. <laughs> Up to now, there's nothing. When you say nothing, what does that mean? I mean nothing, like it is not working. Hmm. So I don't understand why you should launch uh, a certain uh, a certain a certain feeding program and you don't actualize it. You see, like yesterday, and I have those facts, like in my ward, eh? like in uh, uh, a primary called Madaja Primary, hmm. there was 40 kgs of unga only and five trays of eggs. From? From the governor's office. Okay. For this program. For this one. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking, this is Zunga, Usha Peleka. This is a uh, trays of eggs. Mm. But you see, is there firewood? Is there sugar? I mean, what are the logistics? Where are the cups? I mean, how how are we sure that... Where is the cook? Yes, where, the, where, where is the subordinate staff to do all these jobs? I mean, it is just something that is not... But then and is not prepared. More. Let's, let's take a step back. Yes. The governor didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, from today, there'll be a school feeding program. Yes. There had been a program that he had talked about even yes. during his campaigns. Yes. In the run-up to launching, he had talked about it, the preparations for it. Mm -hmm. And when he launched, mm. he was launching after setting aside a budget for it. Yes. And which the county assembly Yes, which is there, we have. Okay. Mm. So, what is the plan on paper? Watch out on the Mambaya ground. Mm. What's, the, what's the structure of this school feeding program? Actually, I can uh, say it here and say I also don't know. Because he does things with, with his own cabinet without including us. So I don't know what is the plan. The only thing I saw is that he launched and that was it. I don't know. I have not sat down with those teachers. We, have no, we don't have any substantial, you know, like plan about this whole thing so me i don't know what he wants to do with, with that with that system mm. he launched his program with the Wamatangi foundation so even implementing he does it with his foundation so me i don't know what he wants with that that whole thing in the beginning you had some kind of some kind of concert wasn't there the members of the county assembly together with the governor mm. you kind of knew what the plan was for the county Right? Did he bring you in from the beginning? Was there, you know, agreement across board from members of parliament? I mean, members of the county uh, the assembly, assembly that this was what was going to happen? You know, mm. uh, this year, we have never had any sitting with the governor. I'm talking about from January until today. We've never, you know, like all the 86 members and the governor and the cabinet, we've never had any sitting up to now. So where why, why do you need to have a sitting? We need to have a sitting and agree on some of these things. I mean, how would the governor know what is happening at the ward level if you don't include your MCs? But you communicate through the county assembly. No. And yes, the okay. county assembly committees are summoning the governor's uh, officials. They you're do that. You're summoning COs, CCMs. They do that. But by the way, before we even proceed, just know we don't have chief officers. Their contracts are renewed every month. So it is just a system that is not working in Kiambu. So and even if you call those CECs and the ministers, sometimes the governor will tell them, don't honor those invites. Mm -hmm. Or they'll come, you'll tell them, this is what you've not done. And, and, and that after that, they do nothing. 
because they treat the assembly like just you know like another bunch of mad people who but just why? make noise why because they don't have respect for members of county assembly and that has been the issue and that is why most members are complaining because there's no way you can be having a government that is not working but when i complain or maybe when i raise an issue at the floor of the house i am i am victimized last time i was here i said the governor is not working and i was very easy and said if he doesn't work he can go home within a week i was not sitting in any committee because i came here and said the truth so some of those things are the issues that members are feeling. I mean, Kiambu is not working. Ah, Mwishimiwa. Yes. It sounds like you're in a minority. Because if the governor, governor could influence your removal from a committee of the assembly, mm. it means that the governor has the ear of many members in the assembly. No. What? If you have not been attending a meeting, maybe it's because those meetings are happening no. to your exclusion. No, Eric. You know what has been happening? Mm. Initially, the vote of no confidence was done but we were able i was able to get the most votes but some of those members who were in other committees like the chairs and so on and so on were told if you don't sign this document we are also going to let off you from your responsibility that uh, like the chairs and they were forced to do that and by the way I was only the governor, as much as he was influencing, he was able to get me off with only one vote. Just one. So he has sufficient influence in the county no, assembly? No, he doesn't. Because we are talking about political but, influence. But here. let me ask you, how come the workers are complaining, the MPs are complaining, the senator is complaining, the women rep is complaining, everyone is complaining, if he has influence? And you know what? We cannot be complaining for ourselves we are not whining or complaining so that we get any benefit from Kiambu. I wish he can just work without even involving me. And uh, in my world, I'll see, you know, better services, roads that are being done. Even if he doesn't involve me, you just do your, the right job and you're good to go. Let me ask, the, we're in a new financial year. Yes. The County Assembly of Kiambu passed the budget that was proposed yeah the budget estimates for the executive mm, and the appropriation bill so you are you approved governor matangi's budget yes did you check the items that he had proposed in that budget yes we did did you make amendments and there so you were aligned we did we were aligned mm -hmm. so then you know mm -hmm. this is the executive's plan yes. for this year yes if nothing is being done mm -hmm. you have the tools and the power mm -hmm. to actually call out those issues yes and specifically say we have set aside money for let's say ecd feeding mm -hmm. program x amount of mm -hmm. money this is how the program should be running mm. and by the time we approved we had made sure we had asked those questions mm. do you have the subordinate staff who will be cooking the mayai and mm. the porridge mm. do you have um, uh, kitchens in each of these ecd facilities yes. where these mayais will be boiled and mm. the porridge will be made um, mm. did you ask those questions no what happens i will take you back to the last budget that mm. was supposed to be implemented eh? like uh, you would find like in terms of development we were able to absorb less than 30 percent of the total amount so the other amounts that were unspent for the 22 23, 23 yes, financial year they were they were returned back to treasury because our implementation actually governor's implementation mm. is very poor you know we are at a place in kiambu where this governor is always saying to tafanya nitahakikisha Nitatenda. Hmm. You, you understand Na what I mean? Na tumeweka kiambu ikuwe kama Singapore. And to sh crown it all, <laughs> unaenda kufagia the streets of, you know, unafagia streets za kiambu kama mchavi usiku. <laughs> you know, me, I sit down and ask myself, our hospitals hazina madawa. Pesa zinaruti. <laughs> You know, you at a place you ask yourself so many questions and you wonder, is this person, you know, I mean, but you don't want to be asked any question. If I ask a question, I am being funded by MPs to ask questions. I am being funded by, no, you know, you are those, those ages of being funded. So ask what we want to, we are asking the governor is to constitute the government that is supposed to be constituted. Have your cabinet working. 
they is supposed to be working mm. make sure our municipality boards are working make sure casual 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 employees are formalized their contracts are formalized and you are the county secretary we have a county secretary with a casual as well one month contract wait a minute yes but we have a board in place we have a county public service board yes so the county public service board is hiring people on casual basis is not the county public service board that is that is the governor has has you know the governor is not cooperating with the board yeah yeah but the county public service board has the mandate it's like the public uh, service commission but you know what happens like mm. the adverts for the chief officers they did the adverts last year in october mm. the shortlisted candidates were, were were put on the papers but the governor was given the lists but he has never appointed and that's not the work of the public service board that's the work of the executive to forward the names to the assembly so that the county assembly of kiambu can be able to vet them and and provide the name that uh, that is suitable mm. to governor kimani wamatangi so that one has not happened a year down the line Let's so okay. if you cannot constitute your government mm. how can you be able to work for the people of kiambu how can you be able to devolve services at the ward level i mean that is something very simple let's take your word because that's what you know best yes, yes. isn't it mm. there are certain things that are supposed to have happened at your ward could mm. you maybe three of them mm. and as a direct of inflows from county government right okay. mm -hmm. what are some of those things that you say have, have not happened and this clearly yes. is as a direct result of the county executive not approving uh one like uh, every ward in kiambu is supposed to get around 11 kilometers of road uh, so far what has been done in my ward is actually 2.5 kilometers and that 2.5 kilometers is not even maram mm. it's like a bad road over there mm. that is not even passable when it rains so that is the only thing i've received in terms of development in terms of uh, i have not received those chicks i'm hearing mm. Mm. i've received 400 bags of maize I lined my people for the universal health care and uh, we were able to register around 3500 names mm. that one did, didn't work it was like a scam mm. it didn't work then HIF thing in Kiambu didn't work the universal health care I don't know what happened it's not working what do you mean it's NHIF it's not Kiambu no it's in it was called Omatangi care have you heard about have you heard about Kangata care yes yes it's working this one was a replica of that or matangi care. It okay, doesn't work. Okay. There are many issues. <laughs> there are yeah. many. Quite a number here. <laughs> I don't know which one to start, but now this is the latest one. Mm. Okay. Mm. So if I look at the Kangata care, mm. I interviewed Governor Kangata and asked him, yeah. so what's his program? Yes. And the program for Kangata care was looking at identifying the people who need support from the county government. Mm. The county government allocates money county government puts in money to NHIF mm. and says that these people shall use facilities in Moranga County. Mm -hmm. And so NHIF, mm. you shall then be able to support them in payment of mm. bills mm. as long as that money is recirculating within Kem exactly. within Moranga County. Yes. Okay. Moranga County government has paid NHIF yes. for X number of people. Mm. Those people, whenever they need to use health facilities, they do the same. Mm -hmm. So if I hear you, you're saying this is basically mirroring the same yeah. with Omatangi Care. Yeah. Kiambu County Government, through the approval of the County Assembly, sets aside money to pay to NHIF yes. on behalf of identified people yes. who are considered vulnerable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. indigents. Mm -hmm. They are paid for by the county. Yes. Are you saying that the County Government did not pay NHIF? Uh, actually, first and foremost, there was no budget like that. Okay. So we hadn't passed something like that. So the assembly has not allocated. We uh, hadn't allocated anything. any money. For okay. that. Even without the approval of the assembly, let's yes, even say yes. that there was that oversight. Yes, I mean, yes, there was yes. that. Uh, did the county government of Kiambu pay NHIF? No, it didn't. Actually, when the the plan was stopped to register more people, I remember very well. Governor said. Uh, the kids that were registering people have gone to Moranga. 
so we have to stop <laughs> that was it they did what yeah the the kids that were registering people in kiambu had been moved to moranga so we cannot continue and the story died like that so the ones that had been registered they what? just took actually what nhif did it was just data NHIF was just registering, yes. but he did not receive payment. Nothing else. So what has been happening mm. is that our people have not been paying for NHIF because they believe Kiambu is taking care free. of them. Yes, and it is free. And that is a narrative that governor had sold, that it was free. So our people are suffering. Uh, let's take a break. It's half past nine. <laughs> What's happening in Kiambu County? The members of the county assembly, several members of the county assembly of Kiambu County came out on Monday and they said, we have issues with the executive. We are not uh, speaking, reading from the same page, speaking one language, and we want action taken. One of those members of that county assembly is Ruth Waidera. She represents Gedega Ward. She's here to explain to us what issues the assembly members are having with the members of the executive. Keep it here. We'll continue this conversation shortly, half past nine. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. When you're impeached, you're impeached. When you're sentenced, you're sentenced. Madam Chief Until the sentence is uh, set aside. Ukibeba vitu kwa roho utakufa. If you carry things in your heart, you will die. <laughs> The reason for which you went to school yeah. and then got, got, you know, gathered experience, yes. that reason must be paid for. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this level. Ship up oh, or ship out. Levels mm. don't change. No, no. Yeah, it's about ship. shipping out. You know my business partner here. Yeah. Shipping out. Are we talking about the ship in the bathtub? <laughs> or... <laughs> or the ship man? <laughs> I don't know what I love to tell us a story of the wine school. And they've been told to write a composition about a ship. This classmate raised a hand. Teacher, are you talking about a ship ship or a ship goat? <laughs> <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. All right, still looking at traffic in the city. It's much better now. I think we're out of traffic hour proper. Um, just a little bit left of it coming off of Kitisuru through then towards Limuru Road. And that Pangani underpass seems to be a sore thumb, still continuing. Um, and um, apart from that, looks like we'll be able to get through it without too much of an issue. Through the morning, let's talk. Spice FM, KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice Let's FM, continue to Nairobi. Continue to 10. Ruth Waithera, the MCA for Githega Ward in Kembu County, is our guest this morning. We're also expecting Patrick Garia from Tigoni Ward. He hasn't been able to join us, but the conversation continues. It's what's happening in Kembu County, members of the county assembly versus the executive, and it doesn't appear to be rosy. There are issues that are happening in this county, and some MCAs, including Ruth Waithera, are not happy. You've talked about ECD feeding program, which yeah. you say was launched, is being implemented poorly. Actually, Those are my words. No. You are saying your words are it has failed. It's, mm. it's not there. Mm. But we are looking at it from in your ward. Mm. You've given us an example of a certain ECD facility mm. where there's Mayai has been provided, Unga has been provided. Mm. The problem is Wapi Maka Makuni, Wapi where Mpishi, the Wapi Where the utensils. Mm. And this is where I go back to the question as the county assembly. Your job in oversight is to ask those questions and Which to ask. We have done that. Whom have you asked the question? So we address our issues through the committee. Okay. okay. Yes. As the committee, someone the relevant officer, and who's his officer? No, we were not about. We, we we get back to the assembly on Tuesday, but we decided for our children and for our people that we are going to <coughs> that we are going to nini that we are going to talk before we open our assembly next mm -hmm. week. Yeah. So you haven't summoned the under what department is this feeding program? Is it uh, under education, health? It's under education, and uh, mind you, we don't even have a count uh, a CEC, a minister. So there's no CEC for education. There's only an acting one. The one who was uh, who was vetted by the assembly, mm. she resigned. 
Okay. Mm. So the current one is acting pending. One is acting pending maybe filling up that gap. So acting because they also have another They also have another department, another department. the ACD department. I uh, know the yeah, the agriculture department. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So agriculture CEC is acting currently as ECD CEC as a education as mm. acting mm. education CEC. But there's a chief officer. Oh uh, yeah, we have a chief officer, but the chief officers that we're having were the chief officers who were nominated by Waititu. Okay, but there's a chief officer. Yes, there's somebody who contract. earns a salary to yes. do this job. Yes, and this person is accountable. Yes, to the people of Kiambu yeah, yeah, yeah. through their representatives, the yeah, county assembly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can summon this chief officer. But note, to come and answer. kindly also note, Eric, that yeah. this guy, this acting chief officer, has not been vetted by the current assembly. Okay. The paint the picture that you paint mm. is that if you were to walk into or drive into Kiambu mm. today mm. that everything is at a standstill nothing is really happening and we're just kind of going through the motions mm. is that the case no okay actually i would say there are some things that are happening mm-hmm. you know some 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 services are running in well but uh uh whatever is if if you look at uh, our governor's page he's given one month chicks mm. so a house gets five of them every word 400 people they get five chicks so a chick is basically like a 100 bob mm. so a house gets five chicks worth 500 bob and that is what he's been doing currently mm-hmm. but they've not been able to come to my constituency <coughs> or my ward i've not seen them mm. And uh, the issue of bursaries, right now he's issuing bursaries for himself. We used to do that for with the MCs and our ward bursary committees so that we can be able to devolve services. But he said we are still in bursaries. So today he's doing it for himself. So that is basically what is happening in Kiambu. What does that mean? Yeah, like I don't know how someone can steal a check that has been addressed to someone else. But he doesn't need the county assembly member. But to our bursary person. act states very clear mm. that you're supposed to distribute those checks mm. and uh, uh, to it's a devolved function, so you're supposed to distribute those checks at the ward level, not at the constituency level. Okay. Yeah. But at ward level does not say with a county assembly member yes there's a ward see, administrator yeah no 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 there's a bursary committee there's that a bursary does committee that we just oversee because basically they don't get a budget budget to do those things they don't get a budget for tents for the pa so the mca comes in with his own money and does those things for them just to work together with the members of the bursary committee okay yeah. so that's happening Yeah. If I look I'm lo- I'm looking at Governor Matangi's Twitter page mm. yesterday he was doing the second phase of bursary disbursement distributing bursary checks to 24,000 deserving students throughout the county mm. all beneficiary tuition checks will arrive at the respective schools this week. Mm. Uh, there he was again impacting lives by distributing the day old checks that you've talked about. Mm. Uh, so so Kuku Kenya chicks disbursement in Tinganga ward Numberi ward Kiambu mm. sub county mm. the things that he's been doing yeah uh, five day polio vox- vaccination exercise with uh, Susan Nahumicha mm. Kiambu is one of those can- counties that have been uh, targeted in this polio uh, exercise polio mm. ex- exercise mm. Mm. the health workers of Kiambu mm. have been roped in into this particular one they are working so things no, that is those are not tangible projects those are projects that are not uh, accountable mm. all we are asking is can he give us projects that can be accounted for you see when it comes to audit maybe he comes to my ward and probably gives 500 people mm. and uh, when probably the auditor is asking uh, the auditor can find maybe in their records they give maybe like 2 3000 people how will they go back to my ward to determine how many checks were given So most of those projects are not tangible projects. And uh, I think like in my ward I would want projects that are helping my people. Like um some people in my ward will do will do dairy farming and will be unable to take their milk to the collection point because mm. the roads are bad. So is the issue of chicks important or the issue of roads? So my people have been asking to tengeneza tu barabara that is all they need 
from your understanding, mm. how do they arrive at what projects then that they're going to take on as a county? Yeah, so normally what happens at, at the assembly, we, we, we conduct our public participations in our citizen forums. Mm -hmm. So our members uh, of the public will come and tell us these are the projects that we think are important. And then we line them in order of priority. So when we line them, we present them to the assembly and we have something called the annual development plan mm -hmm. for Kiambu County. Right. Like what we did for last year on our annual development plan, nothing has been implemented mm -hmm. at all. Nothing. Then we supplemented our budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some issues that we were supposed to supplement even for ourselves. I mean, like our roads, our what, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So actually the budget that we got for almost 17 billion in Kiambu, uh, I think in terms of development in my world, I would say nothing was done. Okay, let's just take a step back. So the annual development plan, mm -hmm. essentially what it is, is looks at through the year, this is what is going to happen. Exactly, per ward. Per ward, yes. Okay, and would you say that in this plan, because it's the example mm -hmm. that you've used mm -hmm. a lot this mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. that the issue of chicks and brooding chicks, whatever, was not on that plan? Was it part of it? It was part of it. It was part of it. Yeah. Roads were also part of it. Yes. And from what you're saying, it would have been better. And markets. And markets. And uh, Boda Boda Sheds. Okay. ECD centers. Okay. All of those water were in the plan. Water mm connectivity. -hmm. All of them were in the plan. So water connectivity, Boda Boda Sheds, yes. ECD centers, markets. roads and markets yes. have not been touched. They have not been the touched. The only thing that has been touched are these... The chicken, the poultry, yeah, essentially. Which, which in my ward, mm. they have not, they have not. Come. Even that has not happened. Yeah, has not happened. Okay, so you can see the non-activity over time. Yeah. This, the non-activity did not start yesterday, and then here we are today. Yeah, it's been over time. What has been the mechanism that you've used for complaint? What has been the mechanism that you've used for? Because essentially, you oversight. Mm. You as the MCAs mm. oversight. The question is, what has been taken in terms of a complaint mechanism to the county executive and said excuse me this is the plan mm. this is what we all agreed mm. by way of public participation assent by the members of the county assembly and then yourselves so but what, we've not seen anything mm, happen so what we've been doing we've been using our committees and our committee chairs mm. to to follow up on some of those issues we've been summoning the ministers to come and explain what is happening and uh, I think as much as you're oversighting, there's normally an issue of goodwill. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to his office uh, a couple of times and we've asked him what is happening. And every time we are there, the governor is always, always responding and saying, uh, by next week, we'll have started your word. By next week, the contractor is here. The contractor is, you know, you understand what I mean? It got to a point, uh, the governor asked the members of the county assembly to bring contractors. Mm. Mm to build the CDs. And we told him, that is not our work. <laughs> what do you mean to bring, bring contractors? Like if I am a contractor or I have a friend who is a contractor, and we told him, no, mm -hmm. that is not our work. It got to a point, governor told me, <laughs> I mean, I am asking, I am not an engineer, I have not been working in a quarry, mm. I don't know what is that, you know. I don't know which maram is good, which maram is bad. So I told him, Governor, and I have those messages here. I told him that is not my work. Mm. That is the work of your engineers. So every time you go there, you're bombarded with something. Well, then, what, don't you think this is a, it, it's political speak? It's like saying, let's work together. It's a, yeah, which it's, I don't have an issue. Let's work together. If you've got a preferred contractor, yes. you can bring the preferred but that's contractor. Not my work. If they pass the job, then but, fine. But that, that, according to me, that is not my work. Use the right channel to get your contractors. Advertise. Do those things and get the right contractors. I don't need anything from them. That is their work. That is not my work. My work is to oversight and to represent my people and to bring on the table on what they want. That is it. So it got to a point where, I mean, nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. Every time, and then, by the way, when you go to governor's office, we are seen in corridors. It got to a point where he cannot see us in his office. So he'll see with his CCTV, oh, uh, Mwashimo has come. So we'll get out, we'll address you in corridors. And you're oh, he'll meet you go. out there. Yeah, I mean, so it got <coughs> even, we got tired, we don't go there. Then we go to a, some point that you say, this governor is joking with us. A whole year, Mashinani people are complaining, the noise is there. You cannot even be able to attend a function because everyone is complaining. Ah, so we decided enough is enough. 
So that is where we are. Shimo, if people were complaining, people wouldn't be turning up when the governor mm. is coming to the ground mm. to meet people, to distribute chicks. When it's coming to the ground to distribute bursaries, but, but, people would but, be shouting and heckling him down. They see, are not. In my ward. No, did you see the videos of Ruiru yesterday? Yesterday's Those Ruiru are the ones video. you've seen. We have videos mm. here and I'll forward you for yesterday. You see what happened in Ruiru. What happened in Ruiru? He was heckled. They're all over. Yeah? No, that was in that was in Juju Thika. Mm -hmm. I'll forward you some that were in uh, that were in Ruiru. Mm. And actually, the MCS for Ruiru are very brave. So there's some areas where he's being he, yes. he's getting heckled. Like now in in Thika, we have six MCS, only two turned up. In Ruiru, all of them turned up, but they told him you cannot give those bursaries because these people you cannot get someone to from almost Kamulu. To Ruru town to get a bursary of 2,000. They refused. So the MCS told the governor, you give them fare of 1,000 bob before anything. And the governor did not give them fare. Mm. So it became chaotic. The MCS took the checks, but they are giving the checks today. Let me address some structural issues. Yes. <clears throat> and this is on the constitution of the county government. Mm. Okay? Mm. The county government mm -hmm. comprises of governor, yes. deputy governor, mm -hmm. CECMs yes. who shall not exceed 10 mm. and at, under each CECM there will be C chief officers chief those officers. are like the PSS yes. under the PSS there will be the directors yes okay so let us start we have a governor in, in office mm. we have a deputy governor in office mm. how many uh, county executive committee members do we have oh in Kambu yes I think we have 10 10 yes okay. but One uh, was we have resigned. gaps of two two so we have eight yeah, we have 10, 10 departments, yes. but eight occupied by CCMs. Yes, yes, yes. How many COs do we have? Oh, the ones that he had advertised were 22. So he advertised for a position of 22 COs. Yeah. These ones applied, were vetted by the County Public Service Board. Yes. And the names were submitted to him for, yes, for, for nomination. For forwarding to the county assembly yeah. for vetting. So he was supposed to nominate them, then he sends them to yes, the county assembly yes, for vetting. Yes, yeah. How many did he send, transmit to the county assembly for he vetting? He has not, even one. Not a single one? Not, mm. not even one. We are talking about since Aweke Biblia Chini. Imagine. Imagine. A county that so the county, the county assembly of Kiambu mm. has vetted county ministers, CCs. Ministers, the CCs have been vetted. They have been vetted. Yes. But the county assembly of Kembu has never vetted a the single chief officer. chief officer. Yes. So the ones that are in office are the ones that were in the previous administration. Actually, were Tito's administration. So these are the Babayao. Yes. How long were their contracts running? Now they get one month contract. After every one month contract, they get another one. So actually... Previously, they were under three year contract. Yes, they yes, yes. Had if, have they all expired this three year contract? All of them have expired. When did the last one expire? Do you know? I think last year in September. So by September 2022, yeah. all the contracts for the serving COs had in Kiambu had expired. Some were in uh, September and some were in December. So let's say by January this year. Uh, everyone, everything had expired. Everybody's contract yes. for the period of three years mm. under Waititos, Tam mm. and uh, Governor Nyoro yes, yes, yes. had expired. Exactly. Now, since January, mm -hmm. what has been happening? So we've been using those the same, same CEOs. And one thing I can tell you is that those CEOs are not committed. So all of them are still in office? Yeah, they're still in office under one month contract. Like now they got their contracts last week. Serving for a month? For a month. When you summon them to the county assembly mm. um, to, you know, hold them accountable mm. for whatever department mm. they're running, mm. do they appear? They come and they're so frustrated. Actually, they're the ones who've been pleading with us, telling us to make sure that either their contracts are formalized or they go home and look for other jobs. So why haven't they gone home? Because they don't, you know, they love Kiambu. They don't want to leave those gaps. Have you summoned the governor himself? Uh, assembly, we don't have powers to okay. summon the governor. Okay. Have you summoned the CEC in charge of administration? Uh, we have. Have you summoned the county secretary? Uh, 
we have an acting on because the county secretary is the head of public service yeah, in the county, in the county isn't yes. it mm. have you summoned the county secretary but the county secretary himself also is on a contract a one month contract every month okay have you summoned the ccm in charge of administration yes we have and have you asked these questions to that ccm we have what are the answers the, that is the work of the governor okay <clears throat> would you say that there's reluctance from the governor to have this conversation mm. and then actually do actually, something it about is it is laxity and lack of focus for lack of a better word because how do you devolve services at the ward level when you don't have a you, when your cabinet is not constituted how do you devolve services to our people when uh, our systems are not working i mean uh, it is just uh, something that is funny okay what recourse are you looking at now? Obviously, there's certain things structurally that you've tried yeah, to do that cannot yeah, yeah. work. County mm. secretary, okay, well, that's mm. the story. Mm. Um, administration, okay, acting, whatever. Mm. Mm. That has been tried, according to you. That's mm. not working. Yeah. What's the next course? Well, we have now? tried dialogue. We have tried to involve the deputy president. We have tried to involve our leaders. Actually, even our bishops in our county they've uh, sat down with him they've spoken to him nothing comes out of it we've tried to send our majority leader in kiambu to go and speak to the governor on our issues nothing comes out so what we decided even this uh, majority leader we impeach him and we have let him off because he's not able to present our our cases to this person mm. so and we sat down and we said it is a high time kiambu people uh, get to know what we are going through. That is when we did that presser. The meetings that we've had with the deputy president, mm. we've seen the deputy president mediating in Meru mm. successfully. Mm. Well, it appeared to be successful. Mm. What is the result of your meetings with the deputy president with regards to the issues that you're facing in Kiambu? So he's been very committed to helping us and actually even Kiambu County but every time our governor is called he says he's going to change and they're going to work together as a team so he's just given time. he actually every time he asks for space and time to deliver but what i keep saying you cannot ask for time to deliver and you have a 17 billion budget mm. the first exchequer of 1.024 i think billion in kiambu already for 23 24 has been dispatched the second one is on the way and we're asking for time. Has the money come to you? <laughs> to you as in? To the Kiambu. No, the doesn't. money has come to Kiambu. To Kiambu. It has landed in Kiambu. Yes, it has. And so what do you ask for time and you have the money? Hmm. Yeah. It is just a question of implementing. I mean, mm. can you imagine uh, 10 years after devolution mm. that we are still, we are still, uh, like my ward still is facing bad roads. Unaccessible roads. This meetings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the DP, mm -hmm. have you actually sat, has he chaired a meeting where the MCAs are there and the governor so that you air your issues in front of him and then he says, that is this is how politically, how mm, can we handle this? That is, that is where I think now we are heading because we've been using our representatives. <coughs> yeah. We've not had a meeting like all the MCAs and uh, the deputy president. Mm. But you seem to but be in agreement as um, as members of the county assembly mm. in the majority mm. that the only way to get out of this problem mm. is to remove the county boss and to have somebody else come no. in. No, mm. no. Actually, I don't know where people got that. Mm. So presser, the impeachment is not on the table. Our presser mm. didn't have any issue to do with impeachment. Okay. I don't know where you guys got that from, mm. okay. which is okay, because mm. uh, we understand you. And you know where we are. Yeah, heading. Pana, there's no, nothing. <laughs> there's nothing no, like no, that. No, 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 okay, no, let's take a few steps back no, no, here. No, no, no. Hold okay. up, yeah. hold up, and mm. <laughs> hold up. Mm. There was nothing like that, by the way. What we are saying, we are frustrated, and we want our issues to be addressed. And if our issues are not going to be addressed, the law will take its course. And what do you mean by What's that? that? What are the legal options that you have? Um, it's all about legal. We don't need legal. The law will, take, the law its will take its course. The law will take its course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's legal, but uh, for now, we've not gotten to that point. 
no, that's it. But you know what we did? We the invited. legal option that the county assembly has yeah. is if you have someone the governor is not coming. Mm. If uh, you have someone the CCMs and they're not sufficiently responding to mm. you. You also have a legal option goes all the way to impeachment. You see, impeachment is an option. Yes. But we've not gotten there. What we did, we asked the office of the auditor general to give us a report. There are some places we were highlighting on wastages. So we invited the ESCC and the DCI to come in, investigate. After we get those allegations from the office of the auditor general, and uh, we see their wastages and all those things, then we can proceed with the other issue. As all these things are happening, as you're having your meetings, mm. internal meetings, mm. addressing the press, mm. the one million plus voters of Kiambu County, mm. plus everybody else who lives and in Kiambu mm. is not getting the service that they deserve. Yes, they they may argue that way. Yeah. If you're saying that health is not performing at health par, is the worst performing then there are Kambu, people yeah. who are seeking health services in mm. Kiambu and they're mm. not getting mm. them. If you're talking about, I'm seeing even people commentating, mm. buildings and exactly. uh, structurally not sound yes. in Kiambu because yes. of and you cannot even summon and ask those mm, questions. Mm. The children who should be benefiting from this ECD feeding program mm. are not benefiting from yes. it. So people are not getting service from the leaders that they elected. Mm. They elected you mm. plus the governor and his deputy mm. into office. Yes. They are not getting services from you and the governor. Yes. But remember my work I am not I don't have a budget. Mm. What I do, I, I make sure the budget has passed at the floor of the house. Then governor is supposed to implement it and I'm supposed to oversight him. Yes. Okay. And that is what I am doing. I am oversighting him because whatever was in my ADP has not been implemented. Okay. So yes. for you to say that any firm action will not be taken from here, what I'm hearing you say is that you're kind of baiting the governor at this point, aren't you? To say that, look, no. you know what? Well, we're not going to come right out and say we're mm. going to ask for his impeachment. But if we can do this in public, maybe then he will speak to us because we've tried to do it in close quarters. We've tried to ask him for an invitation, or rather invite him to have a discussion with us about some of these things, I think, and it has not worked. I think where Kiambu is now, mm. I think now it's, it's all systems go. For what? Anything that can be done to make sure Kiambu County people get the services that they require and what would, will be done. Okay. What would you prefer should be done to sort out this issue? One, uh, this issue of dialogue. As Which you've said has not worked. Has never worked. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've said here that we've never had a meeting with the governor mm -hmm. since 1st January up to now. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sure we constitute, he, make, he constitutes his cabinet mm. and of course we'll do our necessary bit. And uh, we involve our leaders so that we can know where, where the challenge is because yeah. we don't understand him. Then if those things don't work, we move on. To? The Office of the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we get the information. We get all the information that we need. There are two things that I'm hearing <laughs> here. Number one, I'm hearing a county assembly that's not sure of its power and might. We are. Or a county assembly... Mm that is not speaking the same language that Ruth Waidera MCA is speaking. You know, Eric, that a majority of the members of the <laughs> that a sizable number of uh -huh. members in that county assembly uh -huh. are not thinking the same way you're thinking. That is one thing I'm hearing. No. Another thing that I could be hearing is that the county assembly of Kiambu members have sat down, they're unhappy. But you know what they're doing, do hmm. they are pointing at the governor. You know, like when your mother your mother just does this yeah, and then to you. Know. <laughs> you know what you know what she means, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And in Kikuyu, they say, We, Dina Kuorota. You know, I know. I did not point. Mm. I have I have not where? pointed. I, I know pointed. I know where you want me to. That I is know like what you what want I'm me hearing. to say. Is that what the county <laughs> assembly is telling the no, governor? No, 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 no. It's not about that. By the way, we are sure of what we want. 100% mm. sure. Mm. And those members, by the way, they are very upright uh, people. Mm. If we want to impeach the governor, we can table the motion as early as next week. It's possible. We can do it. But you see, we need to have enough evidence that is, this is what has happened. But before we get that evidence, why mm. can't we sit down, dialogue, look at the DPs? Why didn't you implement this? Why didn't you implement this? Why did you do this? And we come up with a solution. Mm. If our people of Kiambu are happy, then we'll be happy. You see, I don't see... Uh, the reason why governor should be cleaning roads at night mm. 
when members of the public don't have enough drugs in hospital? Why would you give, be giving Kenyaji chicken to our people when our hospitals, even oxygen, is lacking? Mm. You understand what? Yeah. We hear you. Mm? Mushimua, thank you very much for joining us today. Mm. Thank you very much. We want to hear and we'll be observing what happens next in Kembu. We have invited Governor Omatangi several times before. We are inviting him again and we keep inviting him. Mm. Soon he will be here in the Situation Room. We want to hear from the other side. Asante Sana for tuning in to Kenya's biggest okay. conversation. Mm. Ruth Waidera is the MCA for Gidega Ward in Kembu. We've been live since 6 a.m. Spice up your life. 10 a.m. See you tomorrow. Thank you.